Hi there. We're not doing the crazy intro today because this is kind of a serious video. Yeah, not clickbait. I'm being attacked. <laughs> and like at this point, would you call it harassment? I'm not sure. So, all right, let's just get straight into it. First of all, you probably clicked on this video like, holy crap, this video is over two hours long. What the hell is going on? Okay, I'm just gonna put this out here. It is a re-upload of a video that got taken down by YouTube. I would appreciate it if you would watch it again. I know it's really long. Quite frankly, this was one of my favorite videos I had made in a long time, and I'll rewatch it again. Shit, like, <laughs> I'm, I'm sure some of you guys would too. I just want to say, like, I appreciate it if you do rewatch or watch the entirety of this video that you're watching right now. I'd appreciate it because this video had, I think, 32,000 views before it got taken down. So let me explain what happened. So the other day, I logged into my YouTube studio and I had like a notification that was like, hey, this video got taken down for a privacy concern and I was like, I'm sorry, what? The video in question is the video I made where I snuck into a Zoom call. Uh, it was a Young Living, huge Young Living team, like 80 people in this Zoom chat. Gary Young, who is the founder of Young Living, passed away a few years ago. His son, he's 20. I'm sorry, like that's a kid. <laughs> I look at a 20 year old as a kid. Maybe it's just because I'm an old lady, but like at 20 years old, you definitely don't have your life figured out. You're almost fresh out of high school, dude. So Gary Young's son decided to hop on a Zoom call with a huge team in Young Living. I have a Young Living whistleblower who <laughs> sent me the link to it and let me just put it out there. This Zoom call didn't have a password. If they're really doing their due diligence and making sure that only people on their team are attending this call, I should not have been let in. <laughs> Anyone could have attended and they were just letting whoever in. I did one of my regular like Zoom call reaction videos to it. I thought it was really fun. I think I made a lot of great points and it was absolute cult behavior that I think needs to be seen. Nasty cult behavior like and you guys are gonna see I went through and I re-blurred everybody everybody's face in this video including Jacob who is Gary Young's son just to be safe just so that no one can say that anyone can be recognized by the visual on this video but I will say that Jacob Young is 100% a public figure. He is a host of a podcast. He has a YouTube channel with thousands of subscribers for this podcast. Not only that, but he's the son of the CEO of a huge multi-level marketing company. There's nothing you can say to convince me that he is not a public figure. Like, he's definitely not a private citizen. Come on. But basically what had happened and the reason the video actually got taken down is because all of these emails that YouTube sent me telling me about this privacy concern went to my old email address that I don't use. <laughs> now, if you guys have been here for a while, you probably know I've had my YouTube channel since I believe I started it in 2005, started uploading in 2006. I am an OG. <laughs> you will not find those videos though, because I don't ever want anyone to lay eyes on them. They are embarrassing. I was like 14 years old. No, <laughs> but I have been on the platform since I was a freshman in high school. So the email address I used to sign up for YouTube back then was the address that YouTube was sending these privacy concerns to. Because once Google bought out YouTube, you had to link your account to a Gmail account, which is what I have now. <laughs> I think there are ways to link like other email addresses and stuff, but but I think it's just like a whole roundabout thing. I would assume that most of us who were around back then probably just made a Gmail account for that reason. If we didn't have one already, you know what I mean? But it was weird because if you guys remember like two years ago, whenever it was, how long ago was it? Maybe three years ago when I made my very first paparazzi video, that video kind of got attacked by two different paparazzi consultants. One of them filed a copyright infringement claim on that video. And lo and behold, YouTube sent me an email to my Gmail account. The one that I have linked to my YouTube account. I have received correspondence from YouTube on the Gmail account linked to my YouTube, including copyright infringement claims. I had no reason to believe that YouTube emails were still going to an old obsolete email address of mine, but apparently they were. Somehow copyright <laughs> infringement claims got sent to one email address 
address and then privacy infringement claims got sent to another. I didn't see the other. Now I have sorted it out on my end. I had to go into like my Google account settings and it's so weird because it says like primary email and then like the email that is linked to my YouTube channel. And then underneath it, it's like, here are your secondary emails. And it's like, yeah, the one that I originally signed up with was there. And for some reason, receiving emails. And I'm like, why is this here? <laughs> of course, obviously I blame myself for that. That is my fault. And I feel so stupid for letting that happen because YouTube is my job. <laughs> This is my livelihood. Like, how did I not take the time to double, triple check that like all of my correspondence was going to the email address that is linked to my YouTube account? I know I probably shouldn't be too hard on myself because I feel like that's a mistake that any of us could make. It's my fault. And the reason this video got taken down is on me. I mean, it really is. YouTube may have made things really fucking difficult when they got bought out by Google, but in the end, I mean, it's really up to me to make sure that the those things are operating the way they're supposed to. And somehow <laughs> privacy concerns were going to that email, even though copyright concerns were going to my other one. I don't, I don't, it's weird, but it's sorted out now. So what I will say is I do still have access to this old email account. So I was able to go into it and see the emails. Cause like once I got this notification in my YouTube studio that a video got taken down, first of all, I'm like, well, if a privacy concern is such a big deal that you can take videos down for it, why wouldn't you know notify me in studio. I mean, if you can notify me that a video was taken down in studio, can you please notify me that a video got a privacy claim in studio? Cause that's when I saw it. I think that YouTube could handle this kind of stuff better, but whatever. But so when I did get to see the emails, finally, there were three separate privacy concerns, which means three people individually, since it's a privacy concern, YouTube didn't tell me exactly who wanted their faces taken out. So that's why I just took everyone's out. The woman hosting the Zoom call. And then there's another woman. Both of these people have huge teams on Young Living, public social media accounts, thousands of followers, they're a public figure until they don't want to be a public figure, right? That's how these MLM people work. So I assumed it's those two women and then Jacob, right? There was a couple at the end of the video, the very end for like 30 seconds. So maybe it could have been one of them and not Jacob. I don't want to take that chance, so I just blurred everybody. It just boggles my mind at the possibility that one of these people was Jacob Young. I'm like, you're a podcast host. Do you want to be a public figure or not? Come on. These people really need to sort their shit out because I'm telling you right now, you can't just like go running around on social media, getting a bunch of followers, like thousands of followers doing what you do, creating content, having people who engage with that content that is not a personal <laughs> acquaintance of yours. Like you're a public figure. Don't do that shit and make it public unless you're looking for some kind of platform. I It makes no sense to me. But long story short, because I did not see those emails, YouTube gave me the opportunity to blur everyone's faces before, like they, I think they gave me seven days to like take action on the complaints or then they would take the video down. And since I took no action because I wasn't aware of the allegations or the complaints or whatever, YouTube just took the video down. So I talked to creator support. They told me, I can't help you, email YouTube Legal. So I emailed YouTube Legal and they said, can't help you, but you can appeal. Yeah, that was the other thing too. So like the notification in studio was like, if you think that we made a mistake, you can appeal it here. And then I clicked on it and it was like, complaint not found. So like, I couldn't submit an appeal. Like the video was just gone. Like I couldn't even download it. Thankfully, the reason this video is in front of your eyes right now is because I still had it. I still had the final copy of it, which is crazy because I usually go and like delete stuff off of my hard drive regularly because I only have a terabyte drive, which sounds like a lot, but with videos, it's really not. So when things get full, I kind of just start deleting stuff. <laughs> and thankfully I still had this, but yeah, I couldn't edit anything. I couldn't even see the thumbnail, like nothing. YouTube just completely took it down without even confirming with me that I knew about it. I don't know. Today I finally 
finally got an email back from the appeal I submitted and they're like, no, we can't reinstate it because you didn't do anything to fix the complaints. And it's like, I didn't know about the complaints anyway. So now I'm fixing it on my own end and re-uploading it as a whole new piece of content. But that's not the end of it though. So yeah, it's true that these young living fuckers got lucky because I wasn't on my <laughs> game. I royally fucked up <laughs> the email situation. They got lucky. They got the video taken down. Ultimately, at the end of it, it's my fault. However, the people who are not lucky now are uh, the second group of people who have been attacking my YouTube channel. Today, I got an email from YouTube. Since I finally fixed it with the Young Living situation, now I'm getting all my emails to the right email address. Thank you very much. I got an email today that um, the Herbalife Zoom call that I uploaded full of high-ranking corporate employees in Herbalife. I didn't blur their faces because I didn't think I needed to. I considered them to be public figures. No, apparently YouTube doesn't think so. So um, yeah, they are now flagging my videos for privacy concerns as well, particularly the one where they're talking about how anti-MLMers are just such sad people and how to not be bullied <laughs> by us, how to deal with negative comments, how to deal with negative reviews on their Herbalife shake shops, that video. Yeah, they're trying to take that one down. So thankfully, YouTube was like, hey, we're not gonna take this video down, just like they did with the Young Living video. They said, we're not gonna take this video down. We're giving you an opportunity to fix it. And so I went through. YouTube's blur tool is absolute dog shit. It took me like an hour and it looks like crap. It's processing as we speak. So by the time you see this video, I would assume that the new version of that video is going to be up. It's the same video. They haven't taken it down. It's just got a lot of blurs on it now that look like shit. So that's great. At least the video is still up and the message can be heard the way it was intended. It was just a major pain in my ass. These two things have happened over the past week. And something tells me that even though I blur most people's faces, something tells me that this is not going to be the end of it. Something tells me that there's gonna be more attacks happening to my channel. I would like to urge everybody who is a fellow anti-MLM creator to be watchful on your emails because if this is happening to me, it's likely to happen to other people. I, I, just, I don't see why it's not. <laughs> there are channels out there within the anti-MLM content creator community who never blur faces. Something is telling me that because this has happened with two different MLMs on my own channel over the course of a week, something's a brewing. <laughs> there might be word getting out that, hey, did you guys know that you can file a privacy claim and YouTube will take the video down? I mean, you would think that this is public knowledge because this has been a thing that they have been able to do this whole time. I guess no one's been doing it until now, but I think there's something brewing where these dumbasses really think that they got us here. Hey, I got a video of Savannah Marie's taken down by doing this. You should do it too. No, that was my fault and I'm an idiot. So like, <laughs> it's not gonna happen again because I normally do blur people's faces. That's why it's frustrating because like I usually take so much time to do it. And then like there are a few instances where I'm like, I don't need to do this. I always just thought I was being extra cautious. Uh, turns out, I think I've been in the right. I'm glad that I am regularly blurring people's faces. Faces, but now for sure, even if they are public figures, I gotta blur their faces, man. I gotta. Unless it's like Rachel Hollis or some shit, you know what I mean? Like, why would I be expected to do that? But no, in this situation, when it comes to these influencers who think that they are social media stars until someone says something that they don't want to hear, then suddenly it's like, I don't, I don't want this anymore. I'm not a public figure. I'm a private citizen. Oh, I'm in my own house. They'll play the victim and that's what they're doing right now. They're playing the victim. Them. Mean old me, mean old anti MLMer is invading people's privacy. It's like you're doing shit publicly on social media, dude. You're not trying to hide it. So from here on out, I'm gonna be extra diligent about that. But the last thing I did want to touch on is something that was brought to my attention by a fellow anti MLM creator. Her name is Blanca. Her YouTube channel is Blanca's Life. She reached out to me and was like, everything you're going through right now sounds like fair gaming. And I'm like, holy fucking shit. Yeah. 
yeah it is what is fair gaming let's talk about what fair gaming is so fair gaming is a practice that originated in Scientology back in the 50s by L. Ron Hubbard. Let me just read the Wikipedia article to you and it describes it pretty well. The term fair game is used to describe policies and practices carried out by the Church of Scientology towards people and groups it perceives as its enemies. Founder of Scientology, L. Ron Hubbard, established the policy in the 1950s in response to criticism both from within and outside his organization. Individuals or groups who are fair game are judged to be a threat to the church and according to the policy can be punished and harassed using any and all means possible uh yeah and what is that oh scientology is what it's a cult and i think it is widely recognized by just about everybody as a cult so when you see these exact procedures happening to another group of people yeah this is fair gaming they see us in anti-mlm as a threat to them especially with the herbalife situation the video i was reacting to to was them trying to figure out how to deal with criticism. Yeah, they're scared of us. They don't want us to speak. This is an effort to silence me, to silence the anti-MLM movement. And listen, bitches, it's not gonna work. Not with me. You wanna talk about making an enemy out of people? I'm your enemy now, bitch. I think with the Young Living video in particular, one of the women in this call, when she's talking to Jacob, first of all, she's like 40, late 30s, 40, and Jacob is half of her age. She's sitting there like this, talking to him like this, playing with her hair, literally playing with her hair like, mm, like, flipping her hair like flirting with him like I know she would absolutely deny that that's what she was doing but her body language speaks for itself so when I blurred it I made sure that you could still tell with the silhouette the blurred silhouette of her body that you can tell her body language and you guys will know exactly who it is the way she talks to him is just like she's absolutely drooling over him and it's gross listen I know that Jacob is 20 or whatever he can give consent so it's not like she's a P word, you know what I mean? But at a certain point, I'm sorry if you disagree with me, but like at a certain point it gets gross. And I think the way she was behaving and speaking to him, flipping her hair and twisting her hair, and I think it was gross to be drooling over a 20 year old child. Sorry, I still think he's a child. 20 years old, you're barely a fucking adult. You might as well still be in high school, dude. The way that this particular woman was acting in this Zoom call towards Jacob Young, uh, in my opinion, was absolutely disgusting. So that was one big part of it where I'm like, I don't want this video to get taken down because I want people to see how culty this is, how absolutely enamored these middle-aged women are with a 20-year-old kid. I know there are gonna be people who disagree with me because he's 20 years old, he's legal. That doesn't make it any less weird to me. She's twice his age and just like sending those signals, what the things she was doing with her eyes, baby, flashing those eyelashes or whatever the fuck they do. So it's no fucking wonder that uh, she and two other people in that video submitted privacy complaints. She doesn't want people to see the way that she's fawning over a 20 year old. I think it's gross and I'm happy to bring it back to you guys. Even though she's blurred, you can still see the body language and you can still hear her voice. Again, and you'll see the original video that I uploaded, most of people's faces were blurred. You'll see, I because I did it in like a mosaic filter. So the ones that I just added to re-upload this video that you're watching now is just like a basic blur. So you'll be able to see what I added and what I didn't. But long story short, this is a cult tactic. This is cult behavior that these grown ass adults are practicing and carrying out. They're like, we're fair gaming this girl. She's a threat to us. She's our enemy. Apparently my voice is loud enough to cause some sort of concern to these people. So the only thing I have to say now at this point is bring it on, bitches. Seriously, these people in these videos that I had to blow their faces out, <laughs> I'm not, like, there's no holding back now. You better fucking hope that someone in my audience doesn't send your shit to me. You better fucking hope. Because if you didn't like what I had to say in these original videos, you're not gonna like what I have to say after you fucked with me. I think I said everything I needed to say. I think I explained the situation. I think I warned enough people from a content creator perspective. And with that, here is the original video. Also, um, the original video was a sponsored video by HelloFresh. Um, I'm gonna leave that in there just because I 
feel like it's the right thing to do. That video did well, so it's not like I'm like, oh, I still need to get views for them, but I'm like, if a video is gonna stay up on my channel that's sponsored by them, like, I wanna leave it up for them, because, you know, they sponsored me, they paid me, so yeah, I'm gonna leave that sponsorship in the video, so other than that, it's a good watch, I promise you. There's a lot of shit in here that is gonna infuriate you, interest you, there's a lot here, but I mean, I also understand if you don't wanna sit through it. <laughs> it's two hours long, so like, I get it, but I just wanted to make everyone aware of what was happening to me, the details behind all of that, and now here's the new version with everyone blurred out. Thank you! <laughs> What's up, wave makers? It's me, Mommy Suna. Cinderella. Welcome. We've got a super interesting one today. Long story short, basically there was a Zoom call with Gary Young's son. Oh my God, my cats are fighting. <laughs> Gary Young being the founder of Young Living Essential Oils, the MLM that is essentially a essential oil cult. <laughs> He passed away a few years back at the age of 68, relatively young for someone who has built his reputation on uh, teaching people how to live long and prosperous lives. But his son, who is a 21 year old, practically still a child. Listen, I know that 21 is technically an adult, but I look at someone who's 21 and I'm like, you're still a kid. <laughs> Your brain is not fully developed yet. You still look like you're in high school. You are a child for all intents and purposes. <laughs> He's a child. So he went on a Zoom call in a Young Living team and basically, Pop-Tart, look at, guys, Pop-Tart's here. She's going crazy. I have a window open because the weather is very, very nice and the cats are loving it, but it's making their little kitty senses go crazy. I don't know. So yeah, the Zoom call is going to be over 50 middle-aged women just fawning and drooling over this 21-year-old child. It's wild. But before we get into it, I just want to thank the sponsor of today's video, HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a meal subscription box. You'll get fresh pre-portioned ingredients and seasonal recipes delivered right to your doorstep. Count on HelloFresh to make home cooking easy, fun, and affordable. And that's why it's America's number one meal kit. If you're still going strong with your New Year's resolutions, first of all, great job. And secondly, HelloFresh can help you reach your goals. With their fit and wholesome recipes, you can indulge in delicious meals without the worries. Save time and avoid the stress of meal planning and shopping too. Let HelloFresh take care of that for you. Ooh, yeah. bars. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, bars. Meal planning is such a chore for me because I literally have no time in my life to do anything ever. So I appreciate having meals on hand ready for me to cook. HelloFresh offers delicious recipes week to week to help you break out of your recipe rut. And in my house, we like that because my husband is vegetarian. So trying to keep our meals new and fresh and creative on our own can be difficult, but we don't have to worry about that stress with HelloFresh. And of course, with HelloFresh, you're eating more sustainably and saving money too. They're pre -pour Portioned ingredients mean that there's less prep for you and less wasted food. Shopping at the grocery store means you almost always buy more of a certain ingredient than you need, which costs you more and contributes to food waste. But HelloFresh cuts down on your food waste by at least 25% compared to grocery shopping. So dive into HelloFresh today. They're offering you a discount, you know, since you're part of my audience. Go to HelloFresh.com and use the code SavannahMarie16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Yes, that is HelloFresh.com. Use the code SavannahMarie16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Thanks for checking out the sponsors on this channel. It helps so much. And thanks to HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Now let's go. Thank you HelloFresh again for sponsoring this video. And thank you guys for checking out the sponsors on this channel also. HelloFresh, top notch. You're gonna love it, I guarantee it. Anyway, so I've mentioned to you guys before, I'm in DMs with essentially a Young Living whistleblower she is somebody who is still involved, but she wants to be kept anonymous, but she sends me all the good stuff. So she slid into my DMs and said, hey, Gary Young's son is going to be on a Zoom call or whatever. Do you want to sneak in and I said yes I do yes I do thank you very much so I did now to get kind of an idea of the kind of energy we're going to be seeing here from these grown ass women she actually sent me a post this post was made one day ago but it just really encompasses the atmosphere we're going to see here of just middle-aged women drooling over someone who might as well still be a child anyway I thought that this caption was so good so I want to read it to you the hun says 
says, A while back, I was talking to someone I had just met and a mutual friend came up in conversation. I said, oh, I know her. I love her. She's on my Young Living team. To which this woman said, oh, yeah, she's at the gung-ho phase of sharing that all people who sell something go through. <laughs> Sorry, that was a weird sentence. I'm sure it will die down soon. I laughed in my head and thought, you have no idea how different Young Living is from all those people who are selling stuff to make a buck. No idea. P.S. That mutual friend is now a silver leader on my team. She's helped hundreds of families convert to a healthier lifestyle and or use oils, supplements, and nature to help and heal their issues. Oh, okay. So essential oils heal people. Okay. Her rank makes an average of $2,200 per month, which is enough to replace most people's income from their job. Okay. But the average rank is going to be skewed by the very small amount of people who are making way more than that at the top of that rank. Most people, if you were to look at the median of that rank, I guarantee it's going to be less than $2,200. Uh, most people probably cannot replace their income with a uh, silver's income. But anyway, anyways, I thought of this comment again last night as I sat on a Zoom call that I hosted for my team with the Jacob Young. Yes, Gary Young, the founder of Young Living's son. That was weirdly written too also. I had reached out to him and asked him to do a Zoom call with me for my team about the heart of Young Living and his dad's vision and intention behind the company. Without hesitation, he said, yes, absolutely. Can you even imagine right now reaching out to a CEO of any company and asking them to host a call for your small team within the company? He's not the CEO, by the way. He's just related to the CEO. The CEO is his mom, but all right. We have thousands of people, but in the grand scheme of Young Living, which has 6 million people, holy shit, that's nothing. We're such a tiny part of it. So, I mean, this is one of the bigger teams in Young Living. So yeah, he probably wouldn't say yes to just anybody, but anyway. You won't find the love, care, attention, heart, and listening that Young Living gives us anywhere else, truly. He shared many things with us, but here were some of my favorites. His dad had a bad accident where he was completely paralyzed. They told him he would never walk again. He healed himself solely with healthy foods, oils, and supplements. Yeah, I doubt that. He definitely received some kind of medical care also, like he had to. You're gonna tell me that Gary Young, after he had his accident, didn't seek actual proper medical care? He didn't go to a hospital? Like, please. Healthy lifestyle probably helped. Essential oils can have a placebo effect, which can be strong to some people. But to say that he was miraculously cured and able to walk again because he was eating healthy and used essential oils, it's like, no, no. What are you leaving out? You're definitely leaving something out. Either that or it's a fucking, like, actual miracle. Oh my gosh. Ugh. I'm so sorry about this hair. This is what happens when babies yank on your hair all day. Anyway, he walked again and lived a completely normal, healthy life. He healed himself. Oh, you know, because Gary Young was Jesus, right? And then made it his mission to heal others. And that's how Young Living was born, continued in comments. And the comment says, All of this to say, I freaking love Young Living with all of my heart and soul. My whole family does. We've been doing this for seven years now. This isn't a side gig or a side hustle. Those things, they're different. There's someone selling a product to make some... What? There's someone selling a product to make some extra cash. This is our life, our heart, our livelihood, our mission, our cult. Oh, I'm sorry, she didn't write that last part, <laughs> but she should have. We're so invested in helping people naturally heal and become their best, happiest, healthiest selves. And it's not just us. This is the Young Living way. This is the Gary Young way. This is the heart and soul behind the company and what it was created to be. I will never stop sharing about these oils and supplements and products that have changed my life and so many other lives as well. I will never stop sharing about this company that has blessed our family and millions of other families in so many ways. I truly cannot imagine my life without Young Living in it. I'm so grateful. Oh my god, wait, there's more. Holy shit. Okay, one more comment, guys. Sorry. I didn't realize it went on this long. I literally just read the caption and I was like, yep, that's enough to definitely share. <laughs> but no, there's more. Okay. He told us many of his memories from building the farms with his dad. Literally, their family all built the farms on their own from the ground up. They source their oils or at least the places they get the raw materials for the oils from like all over the world. And you're going to tell me that they built all of those by hand. I'm pretty sure they like partner with certain farms that had already been pre-established. Not to mention a few years back, I've talked about this before, but they violated the Lacey Act, which is an act to protect endangered species because uh, Young Living had illegally imported some wood or something, like some plant, I don't know, um, an endangered species that they're not supposed to import to make, I want to say like spikenard oil or like rosewood or something like that. I don't know. Don't quote me on it. But what you 
can quote me on is that they had to pay, oh my gosh, how much was it? They had to pay $760,000 in fines for doing this. To Young Living, they're a billion dollar company. This was fucking nothing. But yeah, they did that. So you're gonna tell me that they never imported anything else from a different source ever again after that. Really? You're gonna tell me that? Because I don't believe that for a second. They put their heart and soul into producing the best, most potent, most pure essential oils in the entire world. Yeah, okay. He told us how as a teenager, him and his dad were driving and they passed a Lamborghini dealership. As a car obsessed teen boy, knowing his dad could afford one, he tried to talk him into buying a Lamborghini. His dad told him, that's not what I want to spend my money on. That's not what's important. The farms, young living, the oils, the supplements, healing and helping people. That's what's important. That's where I want to put my money into helping more people. He shared how young living loses money every year because they keep certain oils and supplements on the shelves, even though they aren't big sellers, but they keep them on the shelves because even if they're helping one single person, it's worth it to young living. Yes, he did say this, but also if you recall in, was it my last young living video? Oh, it was the one I made about young living crumbling. Mary Young said that first of all, they're operating at a loss and in order to combat that, they were going to start getting rid of some products. She was saying, you know, why do we need this line of shampoo? Why can't we just have like one shampoo and then you can add your oils to it? Like that kind of stuff. So it's like pretty sure Mary is trying to slim down the entire product line from Young Living. That directly contrasts what he said. Yeah, if they're helping just one person, it's worth it. We're keep, gonna keep it. And then like how long are those oils or products sitting on the shelves waiting to be distributed? A lot of you guys told me in the last video when I asked about this, like do essential oils expire? Yeah, you guys all said, yeah, they do expire. So, and I don't want to like be like Young Living is definitely selling expired product, but if these products just sit there and they aren't big sellers and Mary Young herself was all like, we got to work on moving out product that doesn't sell very much. It's like, okay, are they labeled with expiration dates? Some of them probably aren't, dude. Like, I don't think essential oils have that label. Anyway, how oils can like evaporate and stuff in ways so that it like changes the chemical composition and stuff like that. Like there are things like this that have to be taken into consideration when we're talking about essential oils. Also, by the way, while we're on the topic, sorry, there's like so much. While we're on the topic of the whole Mary Young saying that they operated at a loss. So I've been sent two sets of screenshots. One was from like directly after that in a Facebook group. All the distributors were kind of like freaking out. I'll see if I can find them and like post them here because it's just a bunch of people kind of freaking out and being like, how can we help Young Living not fucking crumble? How can we help them cut costs? Because like I need my oils. Eh. But then after my video came out, <laughs> there's another thread that someone sent to me. A lot of stuff saying like, oh no, she took Mary out of context. And I'm like, I mean, to be fair, I showed you guys the videos that I had. There was clearly a section cut out between the first video of Mary fucking around with her mask and then her saying they're operating at a loss. But then the way she continued saying like, we have a storage room full of paper. Why do we have that? Maybe we shouldn't order as many pencils, shit like that. They completely just leave that out. They're like, no, we're not operating at a loss. Like, no, we're not, we're fine. Like Mary was just trying to say that we have to cut costs here and there, but we're fine. We're totally fine. And it's like, but that's not what she said though. Anyway, so I have screen recordings of exactly what I'm talking about here, but I, for the sake of not outing one of our whistleblowers, which by the way, I mentioned in this video, there's one, there's actually two of them. So to protect them, I'm not going to share them with you guys, but just know that, yeah, uh, <laughs> I saw screenshots of a conversation that let's just say I shouldn't have seen where, yeah, they're all just like, oh my God, no, it's not true. You know, she's taking it out of context. Ugh, and then they like call me sketchy. It's, it's so weird. But anyway, yeah, I'm not going to share it because I don't want to out the person who is feeding us information, but just know that that exists and I would love to share it with you someday, maybe, but not today. See, it first started off as them being like, oh my God, how do we help? What do we do? And then it's like, when when I call them out, suddenly it's like, oh no, 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 that's not happening. It's not, it's, that girl, she doesn't know what she's talking about. She took Mary out of context. It's like, mm. I don't think I did. I'm pretty sure she said what she meant. Maybe if you don't want us to take what your CEO is saying at face value, maybe someone needs to have your CEO reeled in a little bit. <laughs> don't let her go out on a line that far because like someone needs to tell her not to do that shit from a PR perspective, you know? He shared how his dad's motto was, everything I make is for purpose, not for... 
<laughs> my window just like freaked out. It's windy outside, sorry. Not for profit. <laughs> yeah, sure, okay. He fucking like has so much land or had so much land while he was alive. He like hosted jousting tournaments and shit on his land. Like you're gonna try to tell me that like I have all this extravagant shit that other people don't have. Not because my business is for profit. It's like if it's not for profit, then put your money somewhere else. I don't know. All I know is that these people are clearly living extravagantly. You know they are. So if you're gonna try to be like, it's not for profit. It's like, well, but the, but you are profiting a lot. So anyway, he shared lots of other things. He cried, we cried. Okay, Jacob didn't cry. He like teared up a little bit because he was talking about his dead dad. But like the fact that, yeah, there are women in this call who were just like sobbing over this guy's, this 21 year old guy's speech. Like it's weird, guys. It's super fucking weird. It was amazing, emotional and full of their family's heart and love. I wish I could keep going on about what he shared, but I would be here all day if I shared everything. Don't worry guys, I'm gonna share everything. I know that was like a really long introduction to what we're about to watch, but yeah, I definitely wanted to share this with you just so that you could get a bigger picture of what we're about to watch here. So without further ado guys, let's go let's just jump into this meeting yeah this was an easy one for me to sneak into also because like there were a lot of people and my whistleblower my source gave me a name that they're like they won't question you if you use this name i said okay <laughs> thank you also i was cooking dinner while this was going so i missed the first like 15 minutes of this so the first 15 minutes or so i'm pretty much going into this blind wow a lot of people. <laughs> it's maybe the most amount of people we ever have show up to a Zoom. Everybody was very, very excited. I love it. Hello, everybody. So many wonderful faces. I love it. Also, until I came up here after I was done cooking dinner, I had it on this view where you could just see the whole grid of people. But once I got up here, that's when I changed it so that it switched between speakers. So it was more full screen. So sorry that that's kind of annoying here at this point, but it will change. Okay. Um, since it's past eight o'clock, we're just going to jump in and get started. Um, so many people here, like I think this is the most people I've seen on a Zoom in a while, um, which I'm very excited about. And I'm sure you all are very excited to hear from Jacob. Okay guys, so we are just gathering here tonight. Um, we're gonna chat a little bit about- Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to witness his majesty, Jacob Young, Gary Young's seed. <laughs> Gross. We have um, Jacob Young here, Gary Young's son, and uh, we're very, very, very excited to hear from him. And I just want to, again, I've said to him a million times, he's probably like, oh my gosh. Um, but Jacob, we are so grateful. Like I said, I know you are, I can't even imagine how insanely busy you are. And when I asked him to do this, like there was zero hesitation. Like he was like, uh, yes, absolutely. Like I'm happy to do this for you. So again, we are so grateful. Thank you so much. And um, there's so many people here who are just like ecstatic to hear from you. So, um, okay. So first, uh, Jacob, I thought maybe you could just introduce yourself and maybe share three fun facts about yourself, just so we can kind of get to know you a little better on a personal level. Yeah, for sure. Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Jacob Young. And as Lauren stated, I'm Gary and Mary Young's oldest son. Um, I have a younger brother named Joseph, who just turned 18 in February. Um, he is very active in soccer and with the foundation. I'm currently working in our marketing department as a content marketing manager. So I oversee a lot of content that goes out on the website. I'm in charge of most of the social media that you see on all of our social media platforms, our YouTube videos. Um, I'm the host of the Wild Drop podcast. I'm sure some of you have listened to, and if not, you should. It's great. It's wonderful, and I love it. Um, three facts about me. I'm an avid car enthusiast, as you can see. Um, I'm also a, a massive adrenaline junkie like my dad, so I love doing crazy stuff like jousting and snowmobiling and going out to the dunes and stuff. Um, let's see. What's one other thing that I really enjoy? Oh man, I, I guess the other thing that I really enjoy is I'm also a, a video gamer. That's how I spent a lot of my time in middle school. Um, and now I, I actually was a forward 
uh, it was one way. It was a way for me to afford my very first car. Is actually playing through video games. So wait, are you trying to tell me that Gary Young's son is a gamer boy in the tournaments, <laughs> like making money? Oh, okay, okay. I see you, sir. What an interesting person. He is the most interesting man in the world. He's an adrenaline junkie, but he plays video games so much that he's so good at it that it put him through college. Like, good for you, pal. Damn. I wonder what he plays. I wonder if he plays World of Warcraft. I want to join his guild. I haven't played WoW in a while, but I miss it some days. I should get back into it. Anyway, Jacob, hit me up. Let's be guildy. I know, Lauren, you probably don't want your son Jacob to hear that, but... <laughs> <laughs> oh, you like games too, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Joanna just commented and said, uh, one of your favorite things is karaoke. Is that true? I do. Um... Oh, that's cringy. That's a cringy thing to like. I'm sorry. Like some people are really good at karaoke and that's fine. But like it really feels like a flex when you're good at karaoke. But what's even worse is if you're one of those people who thinks you're really good at karaoke. That's even worse. It's one thing to like go to a karaoke bar like once. Maybe just like dabble in it a little bit. Go have some drinks and just have some fun. Like that's fine. If karaoke is so much a part of your life that you have to bring it up and be like, mm, my interests are karaoke. You're into it too far, my guy. And I just get the feeling that he's one of these people who thinks he's really good at singing, but he's actually just like extremely mediocre, which just makes the whole thing worse. I'm just guessing. I don't know that. I just get those kind of vibes from him. All of my family, we love music. My mom loves opera. Um, I love all <laughs> sorts of alternative music of from hip hop to pop and rap and uh, opera. And it, it honestly just depends. I, I prefer listening to the lyrics more than I do the music because I think lyrics really have a lot to say. Um, but all of our family is very musically inclined. Uh, besides my dad, he unfortunately could not hold the tune very well, but he did love to sing and he loved music. Ooh, this person, there was a chat that said, I saw a video of him singing Les Mis. Oh shit, is this something we can find? I just gotta see if it's like on his Facebook or something. What's this? <laughs> Is that him? Is this cultural appropriation? Also, it looks like he's river dancing. What's that, Irish? But then like he's wearing a sombrero and dancing to a mariachi band. That's weird. That's a weird video, my guy. I wanna find him singing Les Mis. Jeez. <laughs> How you doing, sir? <laughs> well, I was trying to sleep till you scared me. Uh, well, There's our man okay. Bear Bear. Goodness, the struggle was real. This is fun. I like this. Oh shit, wait, wait, wait. Could this be it? There was a mighty king once who kept an enormous fleet as dearly loved a treasure as ever a son could be. Okay, let's skip, let's skip. A long forgotten god We lay under the misty mountains cold And slumbers deep And dreams of gold We must awake Our lives Hey, we need another song Solo sonia l'orizzonte manche le parole Boats and hoes! Lo so che non c'è luce in stanza quando manche il sole sole the fucking Catalina wine mixer. Okay, listen, listen. I don't want to talk shit about someone singing because plenty of people could talk shit about mine. That's fine. What I will say is that he's very clearly singing out of his own key. Cause you know, I've taken vocal lessons. <laughs> no, but seriously though, the big part about singing is that you should generally stay kind of within your own vocal range when you're speaking. I mean, obviously like you can go high and low, whatever, but like everything I just listened to, he was singing like this is very deep. It's like if I was trying to, like if I was gonna sing a song and I picked a song where I had to sing down loud like this. Hi, welcome to <laughs> my music channel. Welcome to Savannah's Vocal Tips. No, seriously, 
though. Like, yeah, he's clearly a hobbyist. Anyone who seriously sings that song that he was singing at the end, the fucking Catalina Wine Mixer song. I don't know what it's called, but it's like a classic, like operatic. Anyway, we all know it. We all love it. Anyone who sings that, like not ironically, is the kind of guy that I don't want to hang out with at a party or a karaoke bar. Cause then it's like, sir, sir, we get it. What, you think you're better than me? <laughs> Sorry to go off on this tangent. I was not expecting to go off on this tangent. Like I said, like this is this part where I was like downstairs cooking, it was just recording. So I didn't hear him say that he was into karaoke and that was so irrelevant. <laughs> Let's continue. That's why your mom always sings at the events, right? Yes. <laughs> Wait, hold on. Did she say that his mom always sang at the events? What kind of music? I know that Mary Young obviously likes opera. Do you think because they're like super religious or whatever, do you think Mary Young just like sits around and listens to opera and then also like hymns all day? Church service songs like <laughs> Lord, I lift your name on high. No, this is how it goes. She wrote Gary's name into like every biblical song ever. Lord, I lift your name on high. And by Lord we mean Gary And we're so glad he made these oils Because he might as well be Jesus He came from heaven <laughs> Okay, 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 okay. My Christian past is poking through. Sorry, okay, 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 okay. We're going, we're going. Jacob, I don't know if you remember this, but it was like, I think the Mediterranean cruise in 2015. Mm -hmm. So I don't know really how old you were at that point, but I think there was like a bet or something with my husband and you had to sing karaoke. Oh, that's right. That was in the, <laughs> where we had the Ningxia bar and stuff. Yeah, I would have been probably 14 or 15. Don't they always have yeah. a Ningxia bar? Um, yeah, I do remember that. I do remember that. You I, would remember I did, what I did song lose that was. bet. <laughs> and it was something really funny. Um, but Man, yeah. I, I can't remember what song it was either, but I know it, I know it was a very embarrassing time for me. So <laughs> definitely, definitely a bet I lost and I, I remember it. So I think the song was an embarrassing song. So I'm sorry about that. <laughs> no, it's totally fine. I think, Joanna, didn't you tell me you still have that video somewhere? I still have the video, of course I do. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'll save that for like a really, really good Ooh. time. <laughs> Wonderful. Can't wait to see it again. <laughs> That's awesome. That's hilarious. Okay, awesome. All right. So, Jacob, I had kind of mentioned to you a little bit how um, we're doing something uh, in this this time along with, with Rise to Rank where um, Joanna has named it Heal 15. And basically the whole, um, our whole goal is to help people go back to the mindset of healing and helping people and just focusing on that aspect instead of like sales, 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 and rolling and rolling and rolling, you know? And, um, why I asked you to come on here was because I feel like you are the perfect person to talk about this and your dad's vision for young living, because I feel like this goes right along with it. I mean, I know his motto was always purpose over profit. And um, Joanna said something recently, she said his goal was for us to be healers, not marketers. And so I was hoping that you could just share a little bit about, you know, his heart with starting young living and the purpose over profit mindset, and maybe just some of these things that you've seen firsthand over the years, you know, stories, wisdom, like anything that comes to mind for you along with this, just any encouragement that you can offer with this mindset. Yeah, for sure. Um, honestly, I, I'm not exactly sure where to begin, but I guess I can start kind of from the very beginning and give a little synopsis on everything. Um, as many of you probably know my dad's story after his accident, he was sitting in the hospital. Um, contemplating life honestly he had a very rough upbringing um his father came in and told him to get up and walk that he was just being a big crybaby and was just being over dramatic and everything is it possible and now i don't want to justify that kind of behavior from a father to a son you know what i mean but it's like he did end up walking and he tried to say that it was the oils these people spout out gary's story so much and every single time i hear it i'm like there's more to this there has to be more to this like i was saying earlier he had to have seeked medical care at the very least you know none of us were there none of these people were there none of us saw gary in whatever state he 
he was in after his accident to be able to be like, yeah, there was no way he was gonna walk again. He shattered 7,000 bones. None of us were there. We're all just taking his word for it. Just like everything when it comes to Young Living, we just take their word for it. You know, unless Mary Young says that they're operating at a loss, then suddenly it's out of context. But everything else, it's like, yeah, we just take their word for it. Gary says that this oil will cure this. So we take his word for it because he wrote it down in a book. He wrote the essential oil Bible. Like this is a man who was arrested and served time for practicing medicine without a license. This is a man who thought he knew best when he was helping his ex-wife give birth to their daughter and he ended up drowning the baby in a bathtub. No one likes to talk about that. It makes me upset every time I talk about it. I know, but that's something that fucking happened. He got away with that because they tried to say it was an accident, but it's like knowing the things we know about Gary Young, he always is just like, oh, I know best. I'm Gary. <laughs> what it sounds like to me as someone who wasn't there, of course, but it sounds to me like this tragedy happened to his daughter who should be alive and with us today happened because of negligence because Gary's like, oh, no, 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 no. She can stay under the water after birth. She'll, that's fine. She can still, she's fine. She'll be fine. It's just, it helps her acclimate to the earth and she can stay under there for an hour. That's negligence, dude. That's the kind of guy that Gary was. So who's to say, I don't know Gary's dad, but maybe he was right about that whole thing. That's basically all I'm trying to say. We need to take everything that Gary says and anyone in his family with several teaspoons of salt. <laughs> There's really no legitimacy to anything that Gary Young has ever said or done. He's a criminal. He's a legitimate criminal and a cult leader. This is a cult of personality at this point. Young Living is a fucking cult. It's a commercial cult led by a charismatic leader who is no longer alive, but they still praise him like he is. L. Ron Hubbard style. It's wild. And that was the last time that his dad ever came to visit him in the hospital the entire time that he was there. Um, there were months and months where he went on just honestly, like I said, contemplating life and he ended up trying to take his own life multiple different times. Um, and after not succeeding, he realized that he just had a mission to serve um, from a Heavenly Father and he wasn't quite exactly sure what that mission was. Lo and behold, there was a lady that kind of was walking around the building and she was visiting with one of her patients. And um, my mom knows the story very well and I, I honestly can't remember the entire story. So I apologize if not everything is totally correct. Um, but basically she kind of brought a a booklet, a pamphlet about essential oils to my dad, because my dad at the time was also uh, studying about health, uh, more specifically how to create your own supplements and nutrients uh, through, uh, it was a holistic school that he was attending. And I, I can't remember which school it was. It's certainly one that is not accredited. So we'll just put that in there. Exactly. But he looked at it. And at the time, Western medicine uh, said that what she was sharing with him was incorrect and there was no way that it could be done the way that she was showing him. Uh, one of those things that she was showing was a gentleman who had completely repaired his back um, totally organically uh, through the use of frankincense. Can't do that. Um, and so he, you know, what he was taught in Western medicine was that there's scientifically impossible. And also it's like, this is just another example of, well, what else was he doing? Correlation does not equal causation. It's a logical fallacy. I don't know this person. I don't know his, the story of how his back got hurt and how it ended up getting better. But if you're going to try to tell me that the only thing he did was lay in bed every day and chug frankincense and rub it on his back or something like that. And you're gonna tell me that that cured him. I don't believe it. He was doing something else. Else. Like, was he in physical therapy? Did he, was he under any other medications? Like, what are they not telling us? They want you to believe that it was the frankincense. Oh, it was the essential oils. That's what it was. It's just scientifically not true. And if it were true, then why are there still so many people, even people in the essential oil community, these oily mamas who have chronic health conditions? It's like, if an oil can repair a broken back or whatever the fuck he said, then why are there still so many people who are confined to wheelchairs? Like, you know what I'm saying? I'm just saying it doesn't make any sense and that they're almost certainly leaving important parts to the story out. It's like if I were the person who had broken my back and said that I used frankincense to fix it, it'd be like I was in a uh, physical therapy for five years, but I was also through those five years I was using frankincense. So the reason that I got better is because of the frankincense. You can't say that. You were doing other things. You guys know what I'm trying to say. I don't have to. I ain't got to explain shit. Y'all know. No way that that could be done. And so he kind of just threw it away and just kind of continued 
lollygagging around and just laying in his hospital bed with nothing to do. Um, once again, tried committing suicide and just realized, well, I guess there's just no way out of this. I guess I'll try reading the book. And the more he started reading on this book that this lady had given him, he became extremely intrigued with everything. And one of the things that she realized or that he read um, that she'd given him was in order to build your health, you have to make sure that you're providing yourself with healthy things, healthy food, healthy lifestyle and everything like that. Why do you need a book to tell you that? That's just like common knowledge. My dad was studying health in school, an unaccredited naturopathy school. Then he ended up in the hospital and he ended up reading this book that changed his life. And in the book, he found out that if you just make healthier choices, you will live a healthier life. Excuse me, sir. That's generally how it works, but you needed a book to tell you that? So as we all know, for those of you who have been in the hospital, hospital food is absolutely disgusting and terrible. Um, and he realized that in order to be able to get up out of the bed that he was in, he started to have have to eat more healthy. Now, obviously this happened decades ago, but I mean, I've had two babies. I've spent multiple nights in a hospital and I gotta say, hospital food is not bad. Maybe it was really bad a few decades ago, but man, I remember when I had Sparrow, this sounds stupid, but like I had grilled chicken breast and like some steamed broccoli. And I still think about that plate. Like it is so basic, right? But like, it was just so good. And that's literally, I mean, it was healthy. A hospital's menu is not going to be full of like chicken nuggets and just stuff that's not good for you they're going to feed their patients food that's healthy so for him to be like if you've ever been in a hospital you know that hospital food is just awful and disgusting my dad needed to eat healthier it's like you're in a hospital they're not gonna feed you donuts and i mean i will say that when i had griffin the first morning that i was there i had a banana pancake so obviously yeah it's a pancake you know it came with syrup and stuff and then i had it again the next day because it was so good it was a really good pancake i ordered it for a second time you know they got like yogurt and stuff they got lean meats and you know, for him to be like if you've ever been to a hospital you know the hospital food is disgusting and i'm like at least my two experiences where i was in a hospital for a long enough term to be eating there it wasn't bad and like the menus were specifically catered to be healthy because you're in a place that cares about your health like what are you talking about to be in a hospital and be like i need to eat healthier than this like what <laughs> what so he started asking for you know better meals to be prepared prepared, um, healthier meals that he would put together. Uh, he asked for green smoothies and all sorts of other stuff. He, he asked specifically for more zinc or for more vitamin D. Um, and I don't remember his whole protocol. Um, I'm sure I could find it somewhere. But um, after a few months of doing that, he actually started to regain feeling in, in his toes um, after the doctors had told him that he was going to be uh, uh, paralyzed from the waist down for the rest of his life and most likely would not walk again. And so after doing that for months and months and months, um, he started to regain little by little and, and was able to then move his foot and his whole leg and slowly just start to relearn how to walk again. I mean, is it possible that your body just fucking regenerates? Like when your body gets hurt, it can heal itself to a certain extent. Like you're not gonna regrow a limb or something, but like your body can bounce back from things. How long was he in the hospital? What kind of, uh, he was in the hospital, so he was receiving care. This is so stupid. Oh, well, yeah, he started regaining sensation in his toes because he started drinking green smoothies. Uh? He started taking more zinc. Uh? What? I think you're leaving out a lot of important information there, pal. Hey, Gare Bear, I think you are completely disregarding probably the most important part of the care you received. How about that? Uh, once he was able to do that, once he was discharged from the hospital, he called up the lady um, who gave him the pamphlet and said, I want to know more. And so he started his research then and there. And my dad did multiple studies and went to multiple different countries and met with hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of different people that knew. Okay, well, first of all, Gary's studies that he did, he's not a doctor or a scientist, clearly wasn't accredited in anything. What authority does he have to study anything, to do studies, to perform studies on things? He is not an authority over that at all. But these people are just sitting here eating it up like, yeah, well, Gary did a study and this happened, so it must be true. It's like scientific method who? I guarantee that these studies, whatever it is he's talking about that Gary he did are easily debunkable by actual science. All sorts of stuff about essential oils and um, anything to do with them um, to Egypt, to France, to the Middle East, you know, to the United States, to Canada, to South America. My dad had been all over the world 
uh, five or six different times before he started touring the world even again once Young Living had started. And this was just to acquire knowledge so he could get started with what he wanted to start. And my dad was just one of those people where if you came to him and asked him about something and he didn't know it, he'd say, give me a year's time and I'll come back to you and then we can have this discussion about whatever that topic may be. And he wanted to know that if he was going to share this info with the world, that it was absolutely true, that it was absolutely correct, and that what he was sharing was something that God wanted to share with everybody else. But he wasn't going to do that by, like, actual science, though. Because to be able to say that something is scientifically true, scientifically sound and factual, you have to be able to repeat studies on large groups of people over the course of a long time. <laughs> you have to be able to replicate the results that you got time and time again to be able to say that something is scientifically factual. Did he do that? Probably not. And so he made sure of that before he even started getting to work and started doing his own stuff. After he figured out um, that there was just a lot to do with essential oils and that there was a lot that you could really do, um, even, even before that time, he kind of started mixing his own supplements and creating them and then kind of just started questioning, well, what if I started adding oils to it into these supplements and what it would do for them? So this was all just a big experiment for him. Yeah, that adds up. Seems about right. And he found some amazing things with that. And once he started, he was kind of his own guinea pig in a way and just started to see the benefits that came from it. Um, and then that led on to distillation and singles and blends and all that other stuff. <laughs> There's just, there's a very long timeline of things that my dad did. But this is just an example of like, it could have been placebo. If he was his own guinea pig and he based everything he did off of his own personal experience, that's anecdotal evidence. That's not factual. That's not scientific. And it could be a number of factors that contributed to whatever results he had. But no, like that kind of logic just goes whoop right over these people's heads. And because of how much he did, it's very hard to get everything in chronological order, but I want to make sure it's in chronological order as well. So once he had done his own studies and he had shared with others, you know, what he had discovered with essential oils and being able to mix them with supplements and, and finding stuff and adding oils to infuse with supplements and, and the benefits that they could do and the benefits that blends can have and the benefits that oils themselves can have. There were others that also wanted to be part of that, wanted to be part of the mission and to share with others the power of the essential oils as well. Um, and this also came with a lot of struggles. I, I think essential oils are way more accepted today than they were back when he started back in the 80s and the 90s. Uh, back then, you know, they were considered, it was considered voodoo and witchcraft and, and snake oils and all this other stuff. Well, and nowadays, I think we can all agree that there are some people out there that <laughs> still consider them that as well. I personally just consider it to be fake science, like woo woo shit. If essential oils help you, then like fine. There are some very particular proven benefits that you can receive by the use of essential oils, like lavender for aromatherapy, stress reduction and stuff like that. I think like peppermint can help with like headache and stuff like that. I don't know. There are certain things that like are scientifically proven, but they're very few and far between. So like if you're using it for that, fine. If you're using shit and you think it's helping you and it's a placebo and you feel better about it and whatever, as long as you're not, you know, totally disregarding Western medicine, I guess, while you're using your essential oils, then fine. But like, that's not what these people are doing. That's simply because they, in, in my honest opinion, they were just very ignorant. And, yeah, we're and, ignorant. And belligerent to seeing the truth with belligerent. Them. A lot of times, people are very defensive because they're afraid to know the truth. Uh, and I think honestly, that was just the case. And so, once he had started up the company and everything, he he just wanted to share this in the fastest way possible in a in a worldwide fashion for everybody because he wanted everyone to have what he had discovered. He could have kept it to himself. He could have sold it to another company. He could have done numerous different things to, you know, keep himself happy for the rest of his life, uh, ma material wise, money wise, etc. cetera. But I mean, he my did dad that. just wasn't that type of person. Money was never a thing for him. But he did uh, that. And all the years that I, that I spent with him and watched him, and, you know, there were times that we'd go past like a Lamborghini dealership. And I was like, Dad, why don't you go get a Lamborghini or something like that? It's like, because that's not where I want to put my money. The money needs to be put into the farms. The money needs to be put back into the business for young living. Because this money ends up going into the oils and these oils go end up going into people's hands. And those people share the oils with other people's and then it affects millions and millions and millions of lives. And that's what I want to do with my money. If you want to go and buy a Lamborghini with your money, then you go and do that. <laughs> he was just very selfless. 
Um, he always put everybody else above himself. Many nights, you know, I would come down for a midnight snack, three, four o'clock in the morning. That's not midnight. Three o'clock in the morning snack is a 3 a.m. snack. Midnight is midnight. <laughs> He'd be sitting at the kitchen table just working. I said, Dad, what are you doing? He's like, I, I can't stop. I have to keep doing what I'm doing. Um, you know, I, I have to finish this. I have to finish that. Whatever project it was, he just, he had to finish it. And I said, Dad, but there's a time to do it. And he said, oh, that's not necessarily true. You know, we're never granted time on this earth and, and time is never a promise. He, you know, you can't promise somebody that they'll have 30 minutes of whatever because it's just not a promise that we can make in this life. And I just remember there were, I, I very rarely did I ever see him just sit down and just peacefully <laughs> do nothing. Um, he always had to be working on something because like I said, he always put everybody else above himself. That sounds like a miserable existence. Like take some time to yourself, dude. Do some self-care, chill out. Take like five seconds to just relax. Just always thinking about how many more lives he could touch, how many more lives he could impact. How many more millions of dollars he could make by convincing people that they need these essential oils. That's another thing I wanted to talk about and touch on. My whistleblower, I uh, was talking to her earlier in DMs today and she said that she kind of realized because her, like many other people in Young Living, have had some kind of like chronic illness or, you know, something that they want to find an alternative answer for and she basically said like I recently realized that they prey on that and create some kind of dependency they make you think that you are dependent on the oils so that you won't stop using them I mean hello that's gonna make them a lot of money if they can convince people that this is what you need for survival I have to read exactly what she said actually because it was really good she said I'm too scared to leave also I realized yesterday that there's a reason they focus on healing issues that we have because it makes us dependent on them and feel indebted to them. I was realizing this upon reflecting on the language used when we discussed the results and healing we've had because let's be honest, reducing toxic load and promoting a generally healthy lifestyle is going to heal everyone to some degree, even if it's just one degree. And then the language they use makes us feel like we couldn't have done it without Young Living and that we owe our health and for people like me, our literal lives. They have made me fear that without Young Living, I'll be sick again. Yup, yup, and this, this completely makes sense. Of course they do this, of course they prey on this kind of stuff, and of course they're going to use language to keep you indebted to them, just like she said. So yeah, this is fascinating, but also a cult. <laughs> Hello, Bite Model, how are you? What product needed to be created for this person that had this certain issue? What oil needed to be created for this person and to help that person with whatever they may be struggling with? He just wanted to help. That's honestly all he wanted to do. He just wanted to help. He, he wanted to be a steward of the earth and a steward to all the children of Heavenly Father that are here on this earth. And I find that absolutely amazing. And just that he was willing to give all of himself for everybody and not spend an ounce of time for himself. There were some times where he would, you know, spend time with himself, you know, snowmobiling and stuff like that. But even then, most of the snowmobiling trips that we went on were with members or with employees and team building exercises. And it was all related to Young Living one way or another. It was all for everyone. And I absolutely love that. And uh, yeah, what, what you see today is just honestly something that it grew into that he knew it would grow into. And all of us, including my mother, <laughs> I call my mother the realist. Um, and the perfect example I have of that is when we were exploring the property where the Ecuador farm is now located, it was a bush, literally just a bush, a massive jungle. There was nothing, um, snakes and all kinds of different stuff, just crawling around and slithering around. It was, it was terrible. It was disgusting. And it was the middle of monsoon season. So it was a massive swamp and there were mosquitoes everywhere. But the reason why my dad went to that property specifically is because it was near a, uh, it had volcanic ash in the soil, which really helps with nutrients when it comes to growing plants and stuff. Uh, they're able to soak up a lot more. And it was also, uh, you know, on the equator where there's sun most of the time. And so the plants just grow extremely well down there and also have an extremely high yield rate. And so I just remember my dad standing on the hill where our house is located and looking down at the hill where the distillery is located and said, Mary, just can't you see it? Can't you see the distillery will be there? The shop will be there. I just Googled the volcanic ash thing and I guess it turns out that that's a thing. Learn something today because uh, volcanic ash contains dozens of minerals. So apparently it is good for growing stuff. Interesting, very interesting. 
we'll have the spa down there. We'll have the restaurant down there. And I remember my mom just had this, like, what are you talking about? Look at her eye. Just like, Gary, you've gone absolutely mad. You've got mad cow disease or something. You're crazy for seeing this. And he said, no, just, you just see, it'll come to you one day. And I just, I love that because everything that he said always came to fruition. He always put it out there, always put the energy out there, always positive, always uplifting, never negative. And all of our farms have been built that way. All of our farms came from an idea, you know, and all of our farms exist because he, he realized that we need that farm for that specific reason to create that certain product or to help, you know, provide that oil to so many others. Everything's done for a purpose. It's never done for profit. And I just, I absolutely admire that. I'll be right back. I have to give my baby. Okay, we have a baby here, guys. You ready to listen to some quack science, huh? There's still a lot more left to this. All that we do has always been for a purpose. And every time when we sit down and we have a brilliant new idea or brilliant new product or something like that, the first question is, what is the purpose behind the product? It's never a margin talk. It's never like, okay, how much are we going to sell in this market? Or how much are we going to distribute it? How much are we hoping to regain from this? Um, in fact, what a lot of people don't realize is we actually lose a lot of money each year by holding certain products on shelves for people that don't sell very well. But we know that that product may impact one person's life. And for us, that's just a game changer for us. That's all that matters to us is that it's impacting that person's life for the better. Um, don't so forget what that Mary said. All that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that was great. And I, I just... I love hearing all this because like I said, I don't think obviously any, nobody, I mean, maybe your mom, but would know better than you, like your whole life, you've watched all this. Like you literally have watched Young Living become what it is. You watch your dad create all of this. And um, like I said, who better than you would know his heart, you know? And I think that it shows in Young Living, like just, I, I mean, all of us here, right? Like raise your hand if you are so grateful for Young Living and what Gary has created, you know? All of us are here because in some way we were healed, right? Like we we have an experience with these oils and these products that um, we were healed in some way and then we're here sharing that with others and we're just all so grateful. So thank you so much for sharing all of that. Um, yeah. So what would you say if you're summing it up in a couple simple sentences, what would you say is the biggest thing that you've learned from your dad, just watching him create this movement and just like the, your whole life watching him do what he has done? <laughs> um, I, I don't think there's like one thing that I could necessarily focus on. I mean, there's many things that I learned from my dad. And because of that, like I said, I, I don't think I can cover just one big thing. Um, I would say the most important things that I've learned from watching my dad uh, do what he did was patience, confidence, kindness, positive leadership, and to give credit where credit was due. Um, I'd say those are the big things that I, that I learned from that. I love that. I'm sure that's a really hard question to answer. <laughs> I'm sure you've learned <laughs> many, many things. Yes, very many. Um, okay. So if someone would, if somebody wants to be successful in this business, what would you say to them? Do you feel like this um, heel 15 that Joanne has come, come up with? Do you feel like this is the way? Like, tell me your thoughts on that. Yeah, I mean, for a lot of people, Young Living isn't just the business for them. They honestly just love using the products. And um, the reason why the business side of Young Living was created is because my parents wanted people to be able to live the life that they wanted by simply sharing the products, if that was their passion. And I absolutely love that. Um, and so for somebody that does want to build a business, I would say to them, are you up for this challenge? There will be many highs and many lows and many will stand with you and many will not see your passion and probably call you crazy. Um, are you willing to give it your all? Because at any point, if you're willing to quit, then you weren't willing to give it your all. But most importantly, remember that someday when you reach your goal, whatever that goal may be within the business, it won't be the goal that's meaningful, but it will be the journey. Oh, gross. Come on. <laughs> that's the most cliche shit I've ever heard. That's amazing. Well, Thank amazing. you so much. Okay, two more questions and then we'll we'll let you go after your busy day. Um, <laughs> so we, we just took a couple questions. Lots of people had questions, but we don't want to keep you here all night. So just two questions here. Uh, number one, where do you see Young Living in the next five years? That was a common question that we got. Okay. Wow. Um, <laughs> wow. 
like I said, um, my dad's words always came into fruition. And with that being said, I want Young Living to be where it needs to be in the next five years to help fulfill my father's dreams and lifetime goal of having Young Living essential oils in every home across the world. And that will never happen. <laughs> you know why? Because most of us know that it's all bullshit. Yeah. But most importantly, as well as bringing awareness about not only our oils and products, but the power that essential oils have in general um, and what all they can do. And I want us to be there in five years without any compromises. Okay, so basically what he's saying is that he disagrees with his mom on how to handle the operating at a loss thing because he doesn't want any compromises and she's just like, we got to get rid of half of our products. Awesome. Um, okay, so everybody wants to know, what's your personal top three favorite oils? Oh, man. There's so many oils. Um, uh -huh. <laughs> top three. I love all of our oils because they all serve a purpose. They all have like a story behind them too. Um, but I guess everyone has their favorites and I, I'll pick my three. Um, lavender has always been a staple in my life Duh. and a product that I use on a daily basis. I literally have been using it since I was born and even before then. So he basically admitted that his mom was just using essential oils all over the place while she was pregnant with him. Is that basically, <laughs> I mean, that's not surprising, obviously, like, but it's very unsafe. Most medical professionals, most respectable medical professionals who have gone to accredited schools <laughs> would probably say not to do that. Yeah, there are some oils that like, sure you could say they're safe during pregnancy or whatever but like most of the time they would just generally say to stay away from that stuff while you're pregnant that's just speaking from experience because i've had two babies i mean i guess it's just because they legitimately don't trust western medicine so you can't be like well they're knowingly using essential oils even though they know that they're dangerous to an unborn baby or whatever they don't believe that they do believe that they're doing what's best for their children but like the science isn't there that's why they do it because they don't trust what actual science and medicine says but you know coming from myself who i think thinks logically and with reason to me i'm just like okay the rest of the world considers science to be a credible source and they're saying that it could harm my baby so why would you even take that chance but i swear they just do it to prove a point like oh i used these essential oils all through my pregnancy and my baby's totally fine it's like but what if it wasn't though like that's not a risk i'm willing to take all for what so you can sell your essential oils to people so you can prove a point like i don't know it just feels really off to me i don't like it love highest potential because of the story behind its creation and what it can do for you i wear that as my clone every single day um can you, most... can you tell us can you tell us the short version of that that's story? what i was gonna say can you tell us that story <laughs> i don't know that story <laughs> highest potential was created kind of along the lines of valor um in times where you are really shot down by others and you really feel like you can't achieve anything highest potential is meant to uplift your spirits in a way to achieve your highest potential and to put you in that mindset my dad was one of those people where he believed that if you set your mind to anything you could really do it okay so highest potential is an essential oil blend that costs 50 dollars for a five milliliter bottle for it and again this is a blend 23 essential oils it empowers you to connect with the divine interesting that's that's a weird claim oh cinnamon bark oil that's the one that they found to be cut with synthetics a few years back interesting by doing that you have to create a positive mindset you have to make sure that your mindset is is put in the right spot in order to do that otherwise you're going to run into a lot of barriers and a lot of different challenges um and and i've seen that honestly um, a lot of the sayings that my dad told me I use every single day, I remind myself every single day to set myself into a really positive mindset, a, a, a mindset of achieving my highest potential. Uh, and along with highest potential, it allows me to do what I want to do and where I feel like I can achieve my highest potential as well. So that's kind of the short version behind that. Ew. Okay. So there's um, a message in the chat that says, Ooh, I didn't know that about highest potential. Sounds like I need it. Is this whole thing just a sales pitch? Like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. They want to sit here and be like, Oh, he's just doing this out of the kindness of his heart. I just asked him to jump on on a whim one day and he said yes right away. And it's like, he has nothing to gain from this. He's so busy. It's like, he's mentioning these oils and it's just going to light a fire under these people's asses to go buy those oils not only that but like from what i understand this whole thing was put together to essentially light a fire under their asses to build their businesses bigger because you know they're all struggling they're all suffering right now because they're not doing very well they're operating at a loss in mary young's own words so this is kind of like a motivation this is supposed to get people feeling like they need to build their business again by talking and listening to gary young's own 
own son. So to say that he's doing this, you know, out of the kindness of his heart, he has nothing to gain from this, bullshit. His whole family has stuff to gain from this because this person just admitted that they're gonna go buy a $50 five milliliter bottle of oil. Sounds like he's got something to gain from that for sure. Any good word he speaks about young living is something that he is going to benefit from. And when I say he, I mean just like their entire family. They're gonna make more money. I absolutely love abundance and I'll kind of share a little bit of the backstory about it and why I love it. When Young Living first started, it was extremely rough. And like I said, essential oils were considered witchcraft and snake oil because they weren't as well known or as used back then. Um, and they weren't as accepted by, by a lot of people and medical professions and all that. I mean, they're still not accepted by actual respectable medical professionals. That hasn't changed. It's made it extremely hard to sell the oils, even when my father showed the science and the research behind them. His science and his research is not actual science in legitimate research. It's his anecdotal evidence. It's an anecdote. Yeah, of course, you're going to go up to a scientist and be like, well, I drank frankincense every day for seven years and my arm no longer hurts after breaking it seven years ago. It's like scientists is going to be like, uh-huh. There's probably more factors to that than just the fact that you were drinking frankincense every single day. Probably because seven years is a long time for your arm to heal after being broken. <laughs> calling whatever Gary Young fucking did research, calling that science is an insult to actual researchers and scientists and people in the industry who rely on actual research and actual science. It's insulting. So my father created the blend of abundance in order to bring an abundant amount of positive feelings to the user in hopes to uplift their spirits and to seek purposeful abundance. And what he meant by that is, you know, you might run into abundant wealth, uh, an abundant source of wealth if a family member died and you were given the ranch or something like that. But what a lot of people don't realize is you have to pay taxes on that ranch and, and most people can't pay those taxes. And, and so they end up losing um, that property. And so what he meant by purposeful abundance was abundance that was not going to, you know, harm you or dispel you of, of anything or put you in a really bad spot. And so um, my dad said when he wasn't receiving many orders when Young Living first started, he placed a few drops on the telephone. <laughs> and within 15 minutes, he received 20 plus calls. And before that, he was only receiving like one to two calls a day. Um, Gary Young put oils on a telephone and that made the phone ring. <laughs> I know, you make more sense to me than Gary does. You speak with more wisdom than Gary Young. This guy was all like, you know what? I'm gonna use essential oils on a piece of technology. And suddenly people decided to start calling that phone. <laughs> like what? That's either a coincidence or it's a straight up lie. And so for me, I use abundance to bring positive feelings to myself and to seek purposeful abundance into my life however heavenly father sees fit for me so i honestly love that oil so i love stories like that i've actually i don't know if you know this is a thing but a lot of people that do the young living business put it in the four corners of the room where they're working in did you know that no i did not i love yeah. that though a lot of us do that the the, yeah. the year i hit diamond um I actually painted my whole office with abundance. Well, no, okay. I put a bottle of abundance in the paint <laughs> and painted my office. A whole bottle of abundance oil. Let's see. Let's see how much that is. $51.97. That's more than a gallon of paint. She put an entire bottle of essential oils into a gallon of paint to paint a room. You would think that that would fuck with the paint, right? Something weird <laughs> must happen there. I don't know. Someone in the comments will probably mention that putting oil in your paint. I mean, maybe if anything, it'll just make the paint dry slower, but like chemical reactions and stuff. And also if you go to try to sell that house and your walls are all oily, like that can't be fun to try to clean up. Ma'am, are all the walls in your house just oily? <laughs> Do all of your walls look sweaty all the time, ma'am? I never want to go into any of these people's houses. I swear. Actually the stripes. So half the office was that my personal favorite way to use it is actually like under my feet or even like on my shoelaces because then it's like with me everywhere and <laughs> she puts oils on her shoelaces. You can use our oils on your telephone to make it ring or your shoelaces to make them smell good. <laughs> Oh, oh my god, what is that delicate aroma? Those are my shoelaces. Wow, your shoelaces smell so good. The fuck? No, it's just so that, you know, I always carry abundance around with me. This is some weird shit. Because some guy named that blend abundance, so therefore
therefore if you put it on your shoelaces and walk around in them because Gary used the word abundance you are going to find abundance wherever you wear those shoes like nature doesn't give a shit what you call things it doesn't matter what I call this it's like it's it's just a drink but if I call it my unicorn drink because like I want to shit rainbows <laughs> nature doesn't care not like in my yeah. hair or like it like on me even though our hair is our best diffuser mm -hmm. um, okay I don't know if you had a time limit with um Lauren but I have a question I would like to ask you okay. um, I don't even know if she told you the questions ahead of time and now here I am <laughs> <laughs> that's okay um, we make it work okay okay um I would like for you to share one of your favorite memories from a farm or from a experience with your dad out doing the oil stuff. Yeah, tell us about your dad. Tell us more about Gary, our Lord and Savior, Gary Christ. Like the research things, it could be like opening a new yeah. thing, whatever it was. Like if you have one thing that you remember from being a kid or recently, um, you know, um, in the last, He's last still time of his life. Pretty like much what, a kid. What, what, what was that and what lesson did that bring to you? Man, I, I would say there's two memories that I really look back on. Um, the first memory was the last farm that I built with my dad was the Fort Nelson farm in, in British Columbia, the Northern Lights farm. And <laughs> that whole summer was extremely rough. Um, I mean, we were on a very tight time schedule to get this uh, farm done, not only because we promised, you know, essential oil at the end of the year. Um, the other reason why we were on such a strict time schedule was because of the freeze. Um, and we knew once the ground was frozen, we weren't, be, we weren't going to be able to pour the footings um, for the distillery. And then, <laughs> then we'd have to wait till summer. And winter is very long there and summer is very short. So in the summer, it's 12, 14 hour days because the sun's up that long. And so we'd, we would work that entire time period. And it was just so, so, so rough. And I remember after placing the last beam and putting the canopy over the top, I just felt this like overwhelming amount of joy and just uh, like joy come in and stress go out um because we we had finished it and we were just we we were done essentially at that point and i remember i'd argued with my dad you know so many times like why don't we just bring people in to do it for us like why do we have to do it um and he always shared because this becomes part of your story this becomes part of your memories and i want you to be able to have those memories to share with your children and to share with the members and all of that and at the time, I hated it. I despised it. <laughs> I wanted to be home playing with friends. But looking back at it, I'm so glad that I'm able to share. This makes me sad. As a mother, it makes me feel like, would I pack my children up for a summer and bring them to a foreign country to help me build a farm? To, like, do manual labor? Hey, son. No, no, I would not. Kids have their own lives and their own desires, and it's like holes. Uh, remember the, the movie Holes? And she's like, I'm tired of digging these holes, Grandpa. And he's like, well, that's too damn bad. Like, that's that's exactly how this feels like she was fucking miserable the little girl she was digging on Christmas and I mean they're kids dude and it just kind of sounds like he's uh, justifying this loss of his childhood time to be like well it built character and now I get to tell that story to my kids when I want them to do something that they don't want to do it's like <laughs> gives me icky feelings I don't like it and it makes me feel bad for this kid it's almost you know he was born into this family he didn't have a choice in this so to an extent, it's like it kind of makes you feel bad because he's the oldest son. He's probably expected to take over the entire company, you know, when Mary passes away or when Mary decides to step down as CEO, which I don't know that for sure. It's a big family affair. So I would assume that they want him to continue playing a large role. He went to college like he had his own hopes and dreams and stuff. Meanwhile, they're just like, mm, actually, no, you're going to take over your father's business. So sorry, which, yeah, it's like, okay, you you, poor you. You were born into a rich white family. Oh my god, poor you. But no, I mean, at the very least, like, let kids be themselves. Let them do what they want to do with their lives. You know, he even admitted, like, I hated it. Is he still putting on a front here? Is this really what he wants to be doing? He's 21 years old. He's got the rest of his life ahead of him. Is this really what he wants to be doing? Maybe. Because he's got a lifetime of abundance, <laughs> if you will, if he continues on with the young living throne, taking over the company for his kids and passing it down to generations. 
generations, you know, I say passing it down for generations, assuming that it's not gonna close soon, because you know, they're operating at a loss, in Mary Young's own words, even if they did, you know, last for decades and decades, like, he didn't ask for this, he essentially gets to live his whole life not being the person he wants to be, and that is sad to me, even though he was born into a very privileged life, because I just, I do get the feeling that he just like really isn't interested in all this shit, but like he does it because that's his family, this is the family business, and everyone around me is just in love with my father, so I guess I will follow in his footsteps because that's what everyone else wants me to do. Those memories with all of you and be able to share those with my children, and it is part of my story, right? Um, it's part of me building Young Living in a sense as well. And so anywho, at the end anywho. of that super, super long day, um, I just remember hearing this like metallic clicking sound. And it's a very interesting sound to describe. I, I don't think there's honestly words for it. But I looked up and there were the Aurora Borealis, the Northern Lights, in full shimmer, full glow. And they, and they make this beautiful, interesting sound. And what, Ave, what I didn't know that even made it more amazing is, for those of you who don't know, there, there's a wild herd of buffalo on the property. And they protect the land. We call them the the protectors. They protect the land. We call them the protectors. That's a very creative name. Yeah, great job. I would have never thought of that myself. <laughs> Sensational job at naming that herd of buffalo who protects your land. Great job. Right outside by the parking lot, um, nearly a few hundred feet away from us. And it was just in that moment where I just realized that I shouldn't be upset about where I am right now. I should be cherishing this moment. And so I just, that's one of my favorite memories is my dad and I walking out of the distillery after placing that final beam and looking up and seeing the Northern Lights and then looking, <laughs> looking towards the car and seeing the Buffalo and stuff. It's just an amazing memory. My second favorite memory is we were building the Skyrider farm and the Skyrider was pretty dilapidated. You know, it was, it was kind of junky and especially the backyard because it was just, it was just a, a pit of rocks and stuff. And my dad wanted to clean all the rocks out of the back and have a really beautiful backyard, you know, an awning, a setting. This is lipstick, by the way. If anyone's gonna be like, oh my God, what's wrong with your child? He's got a rash. No, this is my lipstick because I've been kissing on him. <laughs> See, there's more. <laughs> with a sports court and a few other ponds and stuff just to make it really look nice because he knew we were gonna host events there like men's camp and also my wedding. <laughs> this guy is so dedicated to Young Living that he got married on one of their farms. I mean, I'm sure it's beautiful, like don't get me wrong, but it's like, let him be his own person, God. Mornings that we'd work, they were hot, super, super hot. And then throughout the day, it got even worse and worse and worse. And the excavator that we had my dad bought from a farmer's auction, and the only thing that worked on it was the actual arm itself on the excavator. There was like no air conditioning or anything like that. So I'm just sweating and dying and hating life once again, because I could be home playing with friends. There you go. Again, another story. What's one of your favorite memories? And then each of his favorite memory stories are just like, I hated it. <laughs> it's almost sad. And we were up there for about six or seven months. And about after two or three weeks of just working nearly every single day, we finally got the sod put down. I mean, we dug up the whole backyard. We pulled out eight tons of rocks and all sorts of stuff and tilled the ground and laid out the ground and dug down and placed the piping and laid the sod. And then the sod burnt the first time. So we had to tear it all back up and place it down a second time. I mean, it was just like job after job after job after job. And just like, no, like, <laughs> there was just no end to it. And by the time we had finished it, I just remember sitting on the back porch and, you know, I said, um, I said, dad, we're not even close to being done, right? We still got all this other stuff to do. Why don't we just hire other people to do it? And he said, you know, it's just like Fort Nelson. It's, it's part of building your story. It's part of sharing these memories and this wonderful time with your father that you'll cherish later on in life. Put on your chest, son. That's what I'm getting from this. It's just like this poor kid, man. Pop Tart's back here, by the way. She's there. Just in case anyone was wondering, there will never be a moment in time where you'll look back and said, "Wow, I hated that." If anything, you literally just did it. You just did it, dude. You told us that you hated it. My dad was like, "You won't look back on this and be like, you hated this," even though like 30 seconds ago he was like, "Man, I hated it." <laughs> All right. Quite the opposite of wow. I'm glad I had that memory with my father. And I absolutely do. And <laughs> once again, I kind of put my own words in my own mouth and brought my own fruition to me. I did end up getting married in the back there. Um, 
and yeah, I just, I, I honestly love it. So I, I'd say those are my two favorite memories. So. Thank you. <laughs> You're more than welcome. Um, and I know I didn't actually like finish your question, Lauren, you asked for my top five young living products as well. And so I'll quickly go over those and I have a little bit of time too. So if, if you're all right, I'm more than happy to answer a few people's questions as well. That'd be great. Um, I to just didn't want to be here too long, but that would be no, awesome. No, you're, you're fine. I can answer a few questions. I know everybody always assumes I have all the answers to everything and I promise yeah. you I don't. So I'll answer them to the best of my ability. Awesome. Well, um, meanwhile, guys, drop some questions in the chat if you have them while he goes over his five favorite Young Living products or no, five products he thinks everybody should have. Oh, here we go. Five products that he thinks everyone should have. What's that? A sales pitch. Because every single, there's 80 people watching this Zoom call right now. And all 80 people are going to go buy all five things that he fucking says right now if they don't already have it. If Gary Young's son says to get it, then I got to do it. If I don't do it, it's like disobeying Jesus, right? I, you said three. That's why I jumped in before. He oh, no, no you're, you're fine. <laughs> you're totally fine. I have to start off number one with my favorite. Young Living product, which is Zing. I think everybody should have this, especially when we live in a day and age where energy drinks are just so common and so popular. I was looking into this. Oh my God, I have to look up how expensive they are because it's like a stupid amount of money. A 12 pack is $49 and one cent. Retail, of course. And literally all it is, is carbonated water, fruit juices, and a few essential oils. Not worth the price at all. But of course you're gonna be like, you need this in your life. If you're drinking one of those every day and a 12 pack costs Cost you almost 50 bucks. I mean, that's at least $100 a month you're spending on these energy drinks. Not to mention they want you to drink Ningxia Red every day. You're supposed to take like two shots of it a day, like two ounces every day or something like that, which one bottle of that is $50 and you can only buy it in a two pack or higher. So you spend $100. So probably that's another $100 a month that they're going to have you spend. See, that's what this whole thing is. It's like they say they're not the customer, but they're definitely the customers. This wellness collab lady who was just talking Talking. She's up here in the corner just like, I'm drinking Zing too. Ooh. All of these people are probably spending hundreds of dollars a month, which meets their minimum to get their downline commissions. I don't know what it is in Young Living, but I'm sure there is one because every MLM has one. And then, you know, of course, all of the oils they use all the fucking time. It's a lot of money to be spending and there really aren't that many outside customers for this kind of stuff. There just isn't. The customers are the distributors. The customers are the people who sign up for Young Living. And they always like to say like, oh, well, a lot of people just sign up for the discount. It's like, yeah, but you're gonna really try to tell me that like if the opportunity didn't present itself to sell the oils that they wouldn't do that. Of course they're gonna do that. So then they're not just in it for the discount. They will sell it to anybody who wants it. It's all very misleading. Actually, the, the story behind this energy drink was created because of me. Uh, back in middle school, like I said, I actually was playing for a semi-professional video game team called Blaze here in Utah. And I played at tournaments. I made money. I, I played for money. I got paid to play. And we were sponsored by, um, well, we, we were sponsored by other energy drinks. I'll, I'll just say that. I don't, I don't want to get us in trouble. And uh, when my dad found out that I was drinking this stuff, he said, no, I'm going to make you a healthier alternative for you. Um, and so I already loved Wolfberry. That's why Wolfberry is the main ingredient in it. I, I also love how Lime Vitality tastes. That's another reason why it's in there. And then I love um, black pepper. And so that's how Ooh, Zing- There's pepper in this energy drink? That sounds gross. Sorry, I'm not rocking back and forth because I'm like in the middle of an earthquake or something. I'm just nursing. <laughs> so I think everybody should have Zing on their list. Um, another one is frankincense. Frankincense is called the Swiss army knife of the essential oil world. It has tons and tons and tons of benefits. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. I, I don't even want to get started because we'll be here for hours and hours. So I'd say frankincense. Uh, the next one, which I think is a must have is also our CBD muscle rub and cool Zool. They're, they're very similar in how they work. Uh, they're both a very great substitute for icy hot. If some of you have used that in the past, um, it just, what it does is it actually like kind of wakes up the muscles and antagonizes them and causes very soothing effect. Did he say antagonizes the muscles? Cause that's not a word that I want to use when describing pain relief. It antagonizes the muscles. Did he say that? Pretty sure he did. And this method is actually called a, called a hot cold method. That's why it feels hot and then icy at the end. You don't say. Because it's stimulating the muscles and getting them to do this, you're working them and then they contract and they release and that's what causes the soothing effect. And that's actually how you're able to release like kinks and knots out of your muscles and stuff. 
I used it all the time with sports. Um, let's see, I got three. Oh, let's see, what's another good one? I would say, oh my goodness. I'm trying not to be biased here. So I'm trying to think of one for all. This is all bias. Your family owns this company. This whole thing is biased. <laughs> you can get like CBD rubs and stuff from other companies, especially ones that aren't MLMs and for cheaper too, but he won't recommend that because it's not by Young Living. So yeah, it's just like bias by nature. Um, <laughs> we can be biased. We want I, to I think work. I would say Thieves, just all of our Thieves products in general. That whole line is absolutely fantastic and wonderful. Hundreds I of use dollars. our Thieves line on my cars all the time and stuff. Is that his car? He made his car, his Zoom background. It's not like it's a Lambo or something like that, but still, I mean, okay, we get it. You're 21 years old and you have a nice car. Wow. And he uses essential oils on his car. That's weird. No, the Thieves line is a lot of different products. So for him to be like, yeah, you just got to use all of them for all of the Thieves products are so good. I mean, hundreds of dollars in buying all that. They got a cleaning product for everything. They got laundry detergent, toothpaste, all-purpose cleaner, hand soap, uh, just like all this shit. Yeah, this is literally suggesting to the people listening here that like, if you want to be like me, Gary Young's son, you're going to spend hundreds of dollars to get the entire Thieves cleaning line. Freaking yikes, man. I use it as my, I, I've created my own cleaning line with my cars and stuff like that with Thieves. So I definitely say use the Thieves line. Um, goodness, what's another one? Ooh, I would say Hillichrism. For me specifically, I'm a wild child. Um, and so if you have crazy children or if you have a crazy loved one or anything like that, that likes doing crazy activities, I'd honestly use helichrism. I've had a lot of accidents in my life. I've had a lot of cuts and scars and I'll be mostly compliant here, but you can use helichrism to fix some of that stuff. So I'll be mostly compliant here, he says. That's, <laughs> that's why I say helichrism. Not being recorded, uh, you're good. It's not being recorded, you're good. Oopsie, whoops. It actually is, it actually totally was. My bad. <laughs> Great. It helps with scars, it really does. I, so I have a scar right here that you can barely see now. Not to like talk shit about the way that anyone looks or talk shit about anyone's scars, we all got them. I went on his Instagram because obviously this webcam footage is not super sharp, but no, I mean, in every picture where that side of his face is showing, you can definitely see the scar. So wounds naturally heal into scars. So they, they don't stay like a big bloody mess forever. They fade with time naturally, that's what they do. But no, it was the essential oil that made my face wound turn into a light colored scar. Yeah, I was totally the oil and not just because that's just the way bodies work naturally. I was up in, in uh, up at Whistler Black Homes. At, at, it's at a ski resort. And I went off an Olympic jump and landed pretty badly. And my ski popped off and actually came up and cut me in the face, like from here to here. It's a very nasty gash and I actually cut all the way down to my bones. So I had to get 42 stitches inside and out. I mean, the cut was about that big and the scar you see is about like that. Um, gentle baby also really helps with scar tissue as well. And just, um, it also helps regenerate the, the skin that kind of goes over the scar. So you don't have that scar right there. Most people, why they, why they end up having a scar is because they don't, your body can't generate enough material, like repairing collagen to kind of overlap it. So what ends up happening is usually it's like six or seven different layers of skin doing this to repair it, to kind of fill in that gap. And what ends up happening is the last few don't get developed. And so that's why there's that little divot which leaves a scar and that gentle baby actually helps repair those last few um because your your body kind of tricks you into thinking that it's fully repaired and stuff and that's why scars end up getting left um so that and helichrism helps with that a lot so i know someone asked about um where skyrider was at it's located in tabiona utah which is between uh duchene and heber i'm uh looking up this gentle baby stuff right now 29 dollars for a five milliliter bottle it's an aroma that brings a moment of peace to parents with active children and babies also smooths the appearance of skin when applied topically i'm seeing bergamot and lemon two oils that can make your skin more sensitive to sunburn probably not a good idea to be rubbing that all over your skin nothing is sticking out to me that's like that's that's why 
why you you don't have scars for me he's like most people get scars because blah 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 it's like that's just what our bodies do thank you scar expert he's definitely our scar expert for telling us how scars work <laughs> i don't know like to say that your scar is a scar not a big open wound for the rest of forever because of an essential oil is just like correlation versus causation it's just the way your body works like that's what the body does so from headquarters it's like northeast about hour and a half two hours so it's a beautiful drive if you go up over wolf creek pass if you're coming to convention i'd highly recommend you you take the drive out and go over wolf creek pass so you go through hemer and then go towards campus to hit the wolf creek pass it's just it's a gorgeous drive so is that, uh, the, farm, is that the farm you call tabby yep Tabby. Okay. I one time I heard you somebody asked you what your favorite farm was and you said Tabby. Yep. Is that right? So yeah, we we call it so the town where it's located is Tabiona. And the reason why it's called Tabiona is because a chief Tabby that inherited the land there, uh, a, a Ute member. Um, and so that's just kind of the nickname for it is, is Tabby and stuff. So <laughs> and is that that's where your dad is buried, correct? Yes, correct. His burial site overlooks all of the ranch. So it's a beautiful, wow. beautiful, beautiful spot. I just saw a great question. Which one is your favorite farm? Man, I, I honestly like I all the farms I honestly love because I have so many memories at every single one of them. If I had to pick it, it probably would be Skyrider because that's where I spent most of my time with my dad. And that's yeah. where he's buried. Um, but all of them just have so many amazing memories to me. So it's it's hard to pick. <laughs> have you been to every single farm? Um, I have been to every single farm besides the ones that we've opened up recently in the last four years, um, okay. mostly because I was very involved with school uh, and sports as well. I was traveling a lot for sports, so I wasn't able to go. He mentioned an oil earlier, and I just looked it up because someone in the chat was talking about it. Heli chrysum helichrysum i don't know this oil for five milliliters of it is 120 dollars. well 119 dollars and 74 cents let's just round up Woo! holy shit that's a lot of money that's a lot of money to be spending on a five milliliter bottle of essential oils oh but you can if you're a young living uh member you can get it for 91 dollars. so you get it for a discount dude that's so expensive like even like i looked it up on revive and it's 59 dollars. literally half the price dude he's sitting here you're telling people like mm, yeah you need to drink this energy drink that you're going to be spending hundreds of dollars a month on you need to buy this essential oil that costs 120 dollars out of the kindness of his heart he showed up here with nothing to gain from this at all right and then people in the comments are just like yeah yeah this heli chrysum whatever the fuck oil 120 bucks yeah it's great yeah you i'm sure you tell that to all of your downline too huh so you can make a pretty penny off of that sale but i plan on making some trips out there so and you know the world has been closed down for two years so yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, the song for the karaoke was I'll Always Love You by Whitney Houston. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's did great. You, did you pull the video up? No, no, I don't have no, the video. I have to text Justin to ask him. But as That's far as like, you, talk, you talk about helichrysum as one of your favorite oils and um, anyone on this phone call or on this Zoom that doesn't have it, you know, like it is a great um, oil, not just for physical stuff, but for um, coming overcoming blocks. And also for lining my pockets. Thank you, Downline. If you don't have it, you need to buy it. $120. That calcification that happens in our brain um, to really get to the next level of stuff. Um, and I heard Gary also talk about some of the physical stuff. I don't know if it was your leg or Joseph's leg. Or someone's leg that was completely broken <laughs> that you that was do. my leg yeah okay so i, I so broke that's my ankle also in four different why places you love that oil so much, so yep. much. <laughs> sorry about griffin he's just being really fussy because i won't let him climb up and grab my camera if i'm gonna put him down right now he's gonna try to climb up there i know he's going to hey you little stinker did they really just suggest that heli chrysum or whatever this 120 dollar oil healed someone of a broken leg not that it just like naturally will do that itself like to a certain degree, bones can heal themselves. But no, it was the oil. <laughs> it was the $120 oil. Um, but yeah, so okay, I'm, I'm ready to hear the rest of the products. I've been using yeah. it for tinnitus too, and it's helped a ton. Well, wait, where'd my phone go? Grab it. <laughs> I need a Google. Okay, you know what? I'll just use my computer. You can have my phone. That's fine. Tinnitus. 
been hearing that word a lot and I can't remember what it is. Oh, ringing or other noises in one or both of your ears. So this $120 oil will not only make the ringing in your ears go away, but it'll also just heal your broken leg <laughs> because of course it will. We do have some health claims here, guys. You heard it here. Just yeah. That. Ringing. Really, it's really good for clearing skin as well. So I used it a lot for my hormonal acne on my neck and stuff. So um, I'll answer a few questions here really quickly, if you don't mind. So Becky, how do you personally bring in your dad's wisdom into daily life and your work with YL now? So it, it, it's been, it's been really tricky since my dad's passing because when my dad passed, there was always the question of like, kind of like now what? Um, we, we, we know how to Gary on it and we know who my dad was and we understood his passion and his goals and his want and his drive, but it was a matter of leadership because we didn't have that person to kind of lead us. Uh, we had my mom, but you know, no one, no one could replace my dad. No one could be my dad. And so for, for a long time, you know, even now we, we've kind of been like scuffling, trying to figure out like how to do that, how to bring that back. Um, and I read something the other day that most big industries that are, that are family owned or owned by a big name that a lot of people know and love, when they lose that big name or that person, it usually takes them three years to kind of get back on track and, and kind of figure out like where they are again. Um, and, and I feel like we're getting there again. It's been, man, I'm trying not to have leaky eye syndrome right now, as my dad would say. It's been very tough because there's, there's a lot of times where you'll go into the office and you'll be challenged with something. And I could always go to my dad and be like, what do we do? And unfortunately that's just something we took for granted and, and, and don't have anymore. And so it's, it's been one of those challenging things of trying to overcome and, and adapt to that and just figure out how to deal with that. And the way that we bring in his wisdom and, you know, bring in his spirit to while every single day is we remind people who my dad was, we constantly use his sayings or we say, that's how Gary would do it. And that, and we're doing it the Gary way. And, um, in my office, I have a whiteboard, uh, in front of my window that outlooks the hallway that I have multiple people mul that multiple people pass throughout the day. And in, and on that whiteboard, I have saying a lot of sayings that my dad said and sayings that have impacted me in a very special way. Um, you know, one of those being, if you're not living on the edge, then you're taking up too much space. And another, another one that says, you know, everyone called me crazy. Everyone called me stupid, but because I believed in myself, I was able to do it. And so we just want people to know that the legacy, that the roots that this company was built on is never, ever going to go away. That's never going to change. It's who we are and it's who we always will be for years and years and years. Does anyone else feel like it's really, really weird the way they quote Gary all the time and that they always have one of his quotes just at the forefront of their mind, right? Sorry, Griffin <laughs> tore my, this is my bulletin board. <laughs> of like all the stuff you guys send me that I have hanging on my wall. Griffin was trying to <laughs> climb up to get my camera again. And as I was trying to get him to come down, he grabbed onto this and took it off the wall. And now he won't stop messing with it. And now I have to fix it. So that was like a really inopportune time for him to do that because Jake up here started just like crying. But I do feel like it's really, really weird to have memorized quotes like this. It's not like he's a celebrity that like had all these interviews and stuff where it's like those quotes were like memorialized in media or whatever you want to call it. It wasn't that at all. This is just like, oh, I had a conversation with him one time and I'll never forget he said this. And then they like quote it word for word. It's just so weird to me. It's unusual for sure. And also very culty. I mean, the way that these people literally treat him like the Messiah, it's honestly, I mean, very culty and just strange. Now, while things may change, the things that are changing the company, I guess you can say, are called the wings. My dad always said that you really have to adapt and overcome with everything that you, you know, approach and, and come face to face with in life. And so kind of the way that I see it is, you know, my parents are the roots and they've, they've set the foundation of the company. They've set what the company's been built off. They've set the example and the way to lead the company um, by example. And my brother and I are the roots and wings and taking the company into newer, bigger and amazing places, you know, to other markets to, to reach other generations and stuff like that. And we have to do that while also making sure that we are staying true to our roots and we will always make sure that it stays that way. So 
hopefully that kind of answers your question is we always are bringing in my dad's wisdom, his passion, his love, his care, his wants, his needs, his desires through my mom, through me, my brother, through all the employees, you in the field. It's, it's being brought in in so many different ways. Um, and I don't think anybody ever forgets that. Like I said, we have his sayings like plastered all over the building. We're constantly diffusing an oil and sharing why we're diffusing that oil. And it's because of Gary. That's so weird. It's just weird. I get that he's the company's founder. So like to an extent, it's like having, I don't know, maybe one quote at the corporate office or something is fine. But he's just like, oh yeah, plastered all over the corporate office, all over our offices, all over my own house. Like it's, <laughs> that's overkill. It's too much. You people are a little obsessed with Gare Bear. Everything that we have, us right now talking right here, is because of Gary, right? True. And uh, we're just going to continue to do amazing, bigger and better things and Gary on. So hopefully that answers your question. Gary on. Um, Alyssa, what do you see slash hope for the future of Young Living? Um, I kind of already answered this one. Like I said, I, I really just want Yin Living to be in the place where we're just closer to my dad's goal, his, his hope, his wants, his dreams of making sure that essential oils are in every single home. That will never happen. So keep trying. It'll never happen. <laughs> and more specifically, Young Living essential oils. But the Obviously. reason why I say essential oils is because everybody has to start out somewhere. Many, many friends of mine that I'm really good friends with, they started with other essential oil companies um, and we're told that Young Living was this and that and one and the other. And I said, well, why don't you just come see for me? You mean a pyramid scheme? Is that what you're talking about? Um, no, your family runs a pyramid scheme. So we're just going to use these other oils. Thank you very much. And then what? You just like used your power and influence and money to convert them? Tell me what you want to see. Tell me what you want to know and I'll show it to you. And so they asked and I showed them everything. And they were like, wow, it's it's not what they say it is. To, they they it's not what they say it is. It is actually, as a matter of fact, there's multiple lawsuits open against Young Living right now, but one of them is literally for that, for being a fucking pyramid scheme. And I think last year they changed a lot about their compensation plan in certain ways. And that's kind of why a lot of other people are quitting too, uh, from what I've heard anyway, unsurprisingly, because the people who are building businesses in these companies only give a shit about money. And once you take that income away from them, it's suddenly it's like, oh, well, I found a better product actually. Oh, and it, they'll they'll pay me more money to sell it so it's like okay so what are you really in it for then every freaking time so to be like oh no they say it's a pyramid scheme it clearly it's not it's like okay hey jacob what did you leave out what did you tell them a pyramid scheme was did you say oh pyramid schemes never have products well okay well that's not true plenty of mlm companies with a product have been brought down fined forced to change their business structure whatever all for being a pyramid scheme and guess what they all had products so young living is no exception to that rule so, I mean, I'm only assuming that's what he's talking about, but like just the way he was saying it. Like, yep, you're absolutely right. Everyone always makes us seem way worse than we totally are. I know. So crazy, right? Woo, we're not, you know, this weird <laughs> demonic company or anything like that. A demonic company. Okay, so his friends are using essential oils and their issue is that like Young Living in particular is demonic. They're LDS, they're Mormon. Like it's a very faith-based organization. So, and obviously I know that right now there's like the controversy with their cult book being demonic or whatever the fuck. That's a whole different story, I guess. But to be like Young Living in particular is the most demonic oil company. It's like, well, I don't know if I'd say that. Not that any of them are demonic, really, you know, because I don't believe in that anyway. But like what religious people refer to as demonic, it's just like weird for them to point to Young Living and be like, that's the demonic one. Because who's even saying that anyway? There's so many Christians and like religious people in Young Living. Quit kicking my microphone. I think you're tired. You need a nap, huh? <laughs> He's just kicking his little clit. Stop. Anyway, sorry. We, we're going to have to do a lot to get to that point. Right. One of the things that I see is, unfortunately, we have been attacked in, in, in you know, the last few years, just time and time again. And all I can say is that people are jealous. People want to just push us down so we're not the top dog anymore. I'm so jealous. <laughs> Sarah, I'm so jealous that you were born into a rich white family in Utah and that you were never able to be yourself and that despite all of the money that your family has, you will never be your own person because you are expected as Gary's oldest son to carry on his legacy instead of being your own person and doing what it is you want to do in life. No, you have 
had your entire life decided for you because Gary Young is your father. I am so jealous. So jealous. So jealous that you people just have it all figured out. You have the whole world figured out because you have your essential oils. And that's the true meaning of life, isn't it? That's the real way to happiness is through essential oils, right? So jealous. Yeah, you keep telling yourself that, dude. If that's what makes you feel better, if you want to try to say that your haters are jealous, trust me, sir, I'm not jealous of you. I'm going to live my life as my own person with my own goals and my own dreams and my own work ethic and I'm going to build my life the way I want to and not the way my father wants me to. If I had to guess, I'd say he would be jealous of that and anyone else in a situation where they get to decide who they're going to be. He didn't get that. That's something worth being jealous of. And the, the way that I see that is they're bullies. And that's <laughs> yeah. how bullies kind of get their, their high, I guess you can say, is they pester others into feeling bad and having everybody just kind of beat on them and so they feel good about themselves. I mean, he's right, that is what bullies do, but like to suggest that people who are critical of literally everything you do are bullies, the two just don't connect there. Having very justifiable criticism does not make us bullies and then calling you out for the things that you do that are, oh, I don't know, harming other people in more ways than one, financially, medically. <laughs> to call that out is not bullying. You're doing something wrong and you deserve to be called out. You are hurting people in more ways than one you deserve to be called out that's not bullying that's protecting other people from falling into the same dumb shit that you all have you're all just like brainwashed now so you think that this is oh essential oils are the way to life and it's like scientifically that's not proven it's not true if it makes you happy fine but like you're forcing it on other people you're stealing money from people you're charging people way too much money for the same exact oil they could get from somewhere else for half the price sometimes even a quarter of the price their oils are so overpriced selling this lifestyle and making your customers feel like they are indebted to you and that they can no longer survive without you is pretty worthy of criticism. But no, we're bullies. <laughs> fuck off, dude. The best advice that I can give you, fuck your family, man. <laughs> like, no offense, I'm sure you love them a whole lot. But you were not given an option to be yourself and that's just simply not fair to you and I can guarantee that once you get out of the cult you were born into and get a different perspective, you're gonna change your mind about some things but he also has a lifetime of deprogramming to do so it's like how much can you really do at this point he's very much accustomed to this lifestyle and i'm sure he's comfortable because you know money and we're always gonna have that i i just know that for a fact we're the top dog everybody sees us as you know the big target and everything like that and we just have to prove them that they're wrong and so i want us to be in that spot where five years from now they look back and they'd be like wow I was wrong. And I think people are starting to realize that. No, it's actually the opposite. People are starting to realize that you guys are full of shit. So that's why you're operating in a loss. Love guy. I think a lot of people are also seeing it there. Um, so yeah, like I said, it for me, I just want Young Living to be where it needs to be in five years for the sake of the company, the sake of sharing the products with everybody to make sure that more people have access to the products. Um, and yeah, there's just, there's a lot to do. It's a really hard question to ask because I'm sure my answer will change as time goes on. Um, but yeah, just where it needs to be. I guess that's the best way to answer that. I'm sorry, it's a terrible answer, but <laughs> the car cleaning line, can you tell us how we can get access to that if it's not part of the YL? Honestly, it's actually very simple to make. I'd be hesitant with leather though, as <laughs> I learned the hard way if you use too much, it can eat away at, at fox leather, like fake leather. So he called it. Fox leather. Uh, it's pronounced faux, Jacob, faux leather, not fox leather. I'm missing a lot of messages, so I'm just trying to scroll through them. Um, let's see. Amanda, is Young Living thinking about going plastic free and other ways to be more environmentally, environmentally conscious? Actually, this is great. So I can actually bring up a video that I did on the podcast talking about sustainability and what we at corporate headquarters are doing to be environmentally friendly. Um, actually, just this month, we won an award for the uh, zero waste building of the year um, for Young Living. Um, it was a while back that we did this, but yes, a lot of the products that you, a lot of the packaging that your products come into 
I would say 80 to 90% of them are actually recyclable. I know they say may not be recyclable in your area, and that's just because of regulations and uh, compliance and all that. But if you go to your local uh, junkyard or compact, and uh, or you can call them, and you can ask them what can be recycled and stuff, they'll tell you exactly. Like I said, that's why it says in your area, but a lot of what you have can be recycled. Uh, let me just get the sink for all of you. So it's a, it's a great episode. And honestly, I was shocked by how much we are doing environmentally wise to be sustainable as a company. Um, one thing that um, uh, David shared with us, who's our environmental, uh, can't remember his official title, uh, but he shared that all your caps, like the top of your caps, uh, the droppers and the screw ons, you put them in an orange jug and you can actually recycle the orange jug with all the caps in it as well. So, but like I said, it, it may vary depending on where you are. So I would just kind of call your, your local compost or, or compact area. I can't remember what it's called and just see what it is there. But the YouTube link is there for all of you to see. Um, and then we also have a link for this on the website if you want to see more there. So there's actually a ton that you can do. Um, yeah, there, there is a lot. So I'd be really interested to look into all that. It must be because they got in trouble for the Lacey Acts and now they're like, oh shit, I guess we got to be environmentally friendly now or else we're going to get fined again. <laughs> yes. And uh, Elena, kind of to, uh, I just want to quickly share kind of the comment that you made that, you know, the higher you go, the harder someone will try and bring you down is there's actually an, a really, really good saying by a uh, Denzel Washington that I found, um, on the internet the other day. And it says, you'll never be criticized by someone who's doing more than you. You'll always be criticized by someone doing less than you. I don't know if that's necessarily true, but also, I mean, define more. You're doing more when it comes to the industry of creating and using essential oils than me. Yeah, I'm doing more to combat your bullshit. So who's doing more where? I don't know. You have more money, maybe? Like, is that how you define who's doing more? Is that how you determine who's done more? Is that who has more money? Like, is that what it is? Sir, if your haters aren't in the same industry, as you then you can't say that you're doing more than them because you guys are doing two different things i'm not lds i'm, I'm not really associated with any religion i do have christian based principles and i go off the bible if you go off the bible wouldn't that make you christian if you have christian based principles and you go off the bible wouldn't that make you a christian well no i mean i understand like not wanting to associate with certain religions this is super interesting to me because their family is obviously very lds so it was kind of surprising to hear him say this at least he has that going for him as far as being his own person he can make his his own decision but then at the same time it's like well i go off the bible so so you still are influenced by the religious nature of your family <laughs> he's gone far enough to be like oh i don't associate with mormonism but i still go off the bible and i still have christian values okay so yeah i mean you're basically a christian then maybe you don't go to a christian church every sunday you know but i have i have a lot of amazing friends who are of different religions i love hearing you know everybody's beliefs and stuff like that um so yeah i not really associated with one thing or the other. I just, when I want to talk to Heavenly Father, I just talk to Heavenly Father and I think that's about that. <laughs> he doesn't even call him God, that's interesting. If I just feel like talking to myself, I just talk to myself and that's it. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, maybe there's a higher power listening. Oh, that's it, that's it. That's a cool belief to have, I guess, sure. I have one question for you. I may what have an answer. Was, what was Gary's favorite oil? Oh, <laughs> I don't, I, <laughs> I don't know, depending on the year, depending on the day and the trip, he had a preference on a specific oil and time. Um, I'd say after jousting, it was definitely cool as well. Um, after accidents, it'd definitely be frankincense and Um, But the one that he used the most was Valor. Valor. It, yeah, Valor. Awesome. I okay. love his I love his story of coming up with Valor and how he was going to court, I believe, and took a bath and put all the ingredients into Valor into this bath one at a time and just like walked in there like a total badass. <laughs> Yep, yep. What was he going to court for? Oh, you know what? I actually Googled this and it was because he had a run in with the IRS is all I could find. And I couldn't find like court orders or papers or anything like in evidence of this. I love the story. He was going to court. Like this is a guy who has a long history of breaking the law, going to court, going to jail, doing things illegally. And we're all just like, I think it's so funny that he had a court date and he made his own blend of essential oils. And then walked in the cart like a badass. Cool story, bro. Yeah, all of his all of his stories are um are so inspiring.
and um and so are you jacob like what is inspiring about you had a court date so you put a bunch of essential oils into a bath wow that's so inspiring it's like what the fuck what's inspiring about that any of us can do that and most of us probably do not have experience with the court system the way gary young did he was like a fucking career criminal griffin he's like free me from this prison <laughs> Yeah. Well, honestly, thank thank you all so much. A lot of you, you don't realize like a lot of you carry a lot of weight, and you know you may not see it as weight, you may not feel it as weight or anything like that. But there's so much that you do that you know a lot of people don't realize that you do. Um, just being part of this family is a huge task. You know, with everything that we have to do, everything that we go through on a day to day basis, you being part of this family is just amazing it carries out my dad's legacy in one way and in so many different ways and so i have all of you to thank for that i have all of you to thank for the many opportunities and trips that i've been on for everything that i have in my life it's all thanks to you and so i i truly appreciate and, and, and admire everything that all of you do because it's it's not easy it's hard there are some extremely rough and long days like today <laughs> but you know when we look back at it and we take a step back and we see the big picture, we're just truly grateful and, and honored um, for this company, for everybody that's a part of it, all of you included as well. And so I, I just I just want to say thank you for all of that. It's it's truly not possible without all of you. It really is not. So thank you so much. And that's how we feel about you. Like I I personally feel like you're carrying on Gary's legacy, you know, like I I see I see Gary in you. And so like, even just you being here, just, I mean, you used to spend an hour with us, which like I said, I'm so, so grateful. I know how busy you are, but, um, it felt like Gary being here, you know? So we just want to say that we're so grateful and what a fucking big place to fill in life. Like those are some big shoes to fill and he didn't have a choice in the matter. Like imagine being this kid growing up, hearing this all the time, like his dad passed away. And once that happened, it's like, well, you're your dad now. You have to be your dad now. Who else is going to be your dad if it's not going to be you? We need someone to fill your dad's shoes. That's a lot of pressure to put on a young kid like that. And like, I feel sad about it, honestly. I really don't think that it's fair. You can say what you want about, you know, the privilege he was born into and all that stuff. There's that. But it's like, he's pretty much become accustomed to not ever wanting to be the person he wants to be and living up to other people's expectations and carrying on his father's legacy instead of creating one of his own. And that's really sad. So that fucking sucks. I mean, every single person on here, I can speak for all of us. Like we love Young Living with all of our hearts. We love being a part of this family and this Duh. community and just sharing what Gary created, you know, and what you're carrying on now. So thank you so much. Thank you so, so, so much for your time. We all appreciate it. Um, yeah, you're more than welcome. If there's any other questions that you may have, or you'd like to reach out to me for, you know, ideas or suggestions or anything like that, you're more than welcome to email me. This person in the chat's like, a great tribute to your dad's legacy. Yeah, like as if he had a choice. He didn't volunteer as tribute. Like He was born into being the tribute. And his dad passed away relatively young. So like this guy has to fill his shoes relatively young. And it's sad. Um, I can't... <laughs> I'm not the best at responding as I do get a lot of messages. And so I do try to get to everybody's message because I, I am can. so popular. Um, I'm usually about a, a week out from responding just because your message usually gets pushed down to the bottom with all the other messages that I get. But I do try. I really do try to respond to everybody's comments because everybody's voice is very important to me. And even if it's something that we've already thought of before, they might have a different approach to it or something like that or, or a different way of, you know, uh, getting the idea of pushing or going like that. And I just, I like hearing what people have to say and what people have to share. Cause my dad always said that, you know, knowledge is extremely important and, and knowledge is priceless. And he, one thing that I noticed with him is he always listened to everybody, no matter who was talking to him. Cause he knew they might have something that he might not have known, or he might not have thought of it that way, or they just have something to share that could be key to something. Um, I, I think every one of us has something that is absolutely very important to share or say or do or whatever it may be. So, like I said, you're more than welcome to ask me questions through my email or if you have any ideas or like to share something, more than welcome to email me uh, with that email right there. But don't don't get mad at me if I don't respond right away. I do try, though. <laughs> but um, again, Jacob, thank you so much. 
can't thank you enough. Seriously. Um, yeah, you're more than super, welcome. Super grateful. So thank you. Yes. And um, thank you all. Pete, we're very sorry for eating up an hour of your time. <laughs> totally fine. So yeah, an hour very well spent, I would say. It's that thank passion you. thing. Thank you. Thank you, Jacob. You're more than welcome. Thank you all. God bless. Night. Stay safe wherever you are in the world and hope to see you very soon. So take care. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I also want to be, do a huge shout out for Lauren for putting that Zoom on, by the way. I'm going to let this play for a few more minutes because there's a whole other hour to this Zoom call. I recorded it. I need to probably watch through it again to see if I want to share it with you guys because a lot of people just kind of started getting like really personal and I don't know how comfortable I'd be just like really putting that out there because again, a lot of these people are just like straight up victims <laughs> to misinformation and because like the leaders here obviously i'm like yeah whatever let's pick apart whatever it is you're saying but like these lower level people who like are just here just drinking the kool-aid you know you know i feel bad for them so even just like sitting in on some of it i was just like i don't know if i should be here like <laughs> it made me feel uncomfortable like i don't think i'm meant to be here <laughs> like listening to this conversation so i'll watch through it again and see if i want to make a part two out of it or not and maybe i'll cut some people's stories out and stuff but i'll let this play because i feel like there is a just like a little bit of these grown-ass women just like gawking over the amazingness that they just heard it's very interesting for reaching out to jacob for building that relationship for doing that um I know that you were even talking to him before the platinum trip, but I think that's why like, kind of like what since then is when you've really been talking to him more. Um, and I think that is just incredible. So uh, I think we all owe you big time. Um, and before I jump off that subject completely, I also want to give a big shout out to Christy and Lauren together for holding um, space for this entire team and showing up weekly, bi-weekly, three times, four times a week on Zoom with little kids and I don't know how they do it. Um, just so much gratitude for those ladies and for all of you guys for showing up with them. Um, I really truly mean that. Lauren and Christy, thank you um, so much for helping all of us through this season of what is happening right now. <laughs> Can I just can I just say one thing quick? I just yeah. want to put this. I kind of just touched on it, but like, guys, can you even imagine like any other company where like somebody in Jacob's position would get on here with our, in the grand scheme of things, small team and like talk for an hour with us? Again, they were saying earlier that this team is made up of a thousands. So small team in the grand scheme of, I guess, six million people apparently who are involved in Young Living. I wonder if that's like, that can't be actively involved. That's a lot of people because there's only 300 and something million people in America to say that six million of them are involved in Young Living right now. Well, maybe it's like worldwide. I don't know, but that just seems like a really high number to be active at the same time. Either way, it's like if your team is thousands, you're not a small team. And also they she was just saying that the person who put the Zoom call on has been talking to this Jacob guy for a while. So it's like he knows who you are. It's not like you're just like some random person being like, hey, you want to come talk to my team? I guess I can zoom out now. Mom life. Um, I mean, he's he's such a busy person and he's he's basically running and living at this point. And I reached out to him and he got and um yeah, he got back to me within literally like an hour and was like, absolutely, like no hesitation, like not even like, well, what are you gonna ask? How long it's gonna be? Like he was like, I would absolutely love to. I'm so proud of you guys for what you're doing. And like, it just, it just makes my heart for Young Living grow even stronger that like, this is the company that we're a part of. And um, people all the way at the top in his position are willing to just come spend time with us and just share with us. So I hope that everybody feels that on their heart tonight. I think seeing Jacob show up like that, um, that is one of the major lessons that he got from his dad is like you show up if you want something, if it's in your hearts and your passion. And he knew his dad's um, vision, obviously, you know, and it was instilled in him from a very, very young age, um, the hard work that you put in. Um, and I mean, as so I think that's just really important to know that what we show our kids, it's like you can show up, but if you show up in heart, um, 
it is okay. <laughs> you know, and that's what he said. He's like, everything we ever did was just young living, but they made it a family family package you know and that's what I think too like where he'd go snowmobiling he'd bring all these other passions into sorry Griffin's getting really fussy yeah I mean she's just saying it perfectly well and it's like it's not like it's a weird thing for a company to like keep it in the family you know they do that all the time like big companies will stay in the family it just sucks like this kid didn't have a choice you know his dad passed away when he was probably still in high school I would assume he basically had decisions made for him since the minute he was born they're talking about it like he's like, oh, he's stepping up, like, what a great guy. And it's like, you're not considering him as a human being. They're basically considering him to be a fucking effigy of his father, you know? And it's like, he's not Jacob Young to them. He is Gary Young's son. Young Living and make it the package deal. And that's honestly like, up until like pandemic style, like that's how my life was. Like, it was my family, my friends, Young Living in one package in my passions. Um, even if they weren't just wellness stuff, like whatever the other passions were made it one thing. And I think that's what's making Jacob show up the way he is. And that's what, how we need to show up. Um, it's just, that was just a little side note. I definitely feel like, I don't know about you guys, but I felt like Gary's presence in him. I don't know if you guys feel that too, but. It's weird. I thought that was pretty cool. And then they talk about Gary as if they knew him personally. Like, yeah, I definitely felt Gary there. It's like, did you ever speak to him? Like, maybe they did. When did he pass away? He died in 2018. Okay, so I thought it was longer ago than that. Well, he stepped down from being CEO and made Mary the CEO before he died. We were laughing at you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I can tell that's why I unmuted you guys. <laughs> She's like tearing uh, up. So we'd stop. I wanted to, one thing that stood out to me with what Jacob said was, what would you say to someone who wants to build this business or is interested in it? And it was the most, like, it was such a good response and real, like, are you ready for it? Like, and to be real, cause it is, it's a business. If you want people to it's be a building cult. a business with you and actually building a business with you, then we need to approach it. I think it's a brilliant way to approach it by being like, all right, let's do this. I'm going to run with you. I'm going to be here. It's not always going to be easy. It is going to take work. It is going to take sacrifices and commitments and all of this. And that was just a reminder for me because sometimes it's like, it, the business is so fun. And it like, yes, it is. Like, look what we're doing tonight. And there's nights where you stay up till 10, 11, 12, 3 a.m. and you're working your butt off. And there's times you have to say no to other things to say yes to your business. And But time freedom though, right? So that really stood out to me. And then hearing, just hearing, he, it was so sweet the whole time. I'm like, he's just like adorable and stepping into so much as a 20, 20, 21, 22 year old, like, and he's holding it. And to just like give grace and so much love to their family and what they're holding, like they like, yes, Young Living is going through growing pains that they're going to come out of. It's happened before. It's going to happen again. That's life. That's business. Growing pains. Uh, it's more like the opposite. I don't know if you guys remember, there were some chats in the video I made where Mary Young said that they were operating at a loss. There was someone in the chat that I think said they lost like 2,000 team members or something like that. And that's just one person. There's a lot of people who have quit Young Living. It's the opposite of a growing pain. They are literally losing revenue. In Mary Young's own words they're operating at a loss so I don't think that I would call this growing pains like yeah you're you're going through some shit you're losing money you're losing distributors that's the opposite of a growing pain what happened is they went through a growth spurt during COVID because that was a big selling point for them COVID was a selling point for them it's like we see it even with the doTERRA team call I know like they're two different companies but like the same shit was going on in Young Living basically telling people that their essential oils are going to treat cure prevent COVID received letters from the FTC to tell them to stop doing that. Did they stop doing it? No, but that kind of marketing material, if you will, definitely contributed to a growth in the company. And now two years later, COVID is, is still here, it's still taking lives, still doing its thing. And people have been using those oils to prevent it for two years. And meanwhile, we're still in it. Maybe they're realizing, I guess these oils don't do shit. And also now I've spent thousands of dollars on these fucking oils. Or, you know, it's like, I've 
I've been in this for two years. I was promised that I was going to recoup some of my losses from lost income from losing my job or having my job closed down during COVID. Like, and here I am, I haven't made a dime. Two years is long enough for people to realize that stuff, to realize the lie. So it's really not surprising that Young Living is having the opposite of a growth spurt, but go ahead, call it a growth spurt, guys, that's fine. But we literally saw people in the comments in that video about Mary Young saying they operated at a loss, literally admitting to losing thousands of people on their team, which is going to result in thousands of dollars lost in revenue. It all just makes so much sense. And the way that they are doing it is like, it just comes back to the core and to the heart of Young Living. Recording in progress. <clears throat> and that I felt just was like, so, so like I could feel it in him, not just see it, but feel that. So that was just assuring for me and I'm sure for a lot of us of random guy why we're here and coming back to that and that it really is the amazing company that we know it to be and it always will be wow I just started recording <laughs> everybody get compliant quick <laughs> Um, you know, don't worry, I had it covered for the first half, so we're good. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna end it there. Um, like I said, there's still more to the Zoom call. There was a lot going on there, but you all get the gist of the uh, Jacob Young shit, and I think that was the most important part that I wanted to share with you guys anyway. But that being said, guys, let me know what you think of this weird culty Zoom call of 40-year-old women fawning over a 21-year-old. Pretty strange, if I do say so myself. But let's thank some people now. First of all, thank you HelloFresh for sponsoring this video. Click my link, use my code down below. Get yourself that sick discount, bro. And now we get to thank my financial supporters, my patrons, and my YouTube members. These are the people who get access to things like our private Discord server. We have a postcard club. I bought cute little springtime postcards to send out to everybody this month. So that'll be fun. I say everybody, I mean everyone in the postcard tier. Whenever I don't have a sponsored video, I can give you guys early access to it. I do that as much as I can, but like when they're sponsored, it's like I can't usually. But anyway, all that and more. If it sounds good to you or you just want to support your girl, you can go to patreon.com slash Savannah Marie or you can click the join button beneath this video and that'll get you signed up with my YouTube memberships. It's all the same. Just whatever platform you want to use is fine. And with that, the biggest thank you in the whole wide world goes to Hula Chowdown, Janelle Pratt, Carolyn Barilli, Cecilia Dudek, Christy Taylor, Elizabeth Wyatt, Nitty Dragon, Kutch Squad 2.0, Leanne, Molly Wasalu, Ryan Mew, Sheila Tapia, Tiff C, Turd Ferguson, hashtag get the W, Weatherington Law, Alice W, Amanda Shannon, Amy Huffman, April Limblom, Boris Geller, Casey Scraper, Katrina Rosemary, Claire T, Danae, Daniel Urena, E. Higgins, Jerry Duncan, Hannah Morrison, Hannibal Crossing, Heidi Haw, Hippie Kansas Girl, Julia Wheeler, Kim Cartwright, Critter, Maddie Darley, Marley Fletcher, Ray, Stephanie Hell, Tuesday the 13th, Jessica Cecil, Colin F, Laura Nickel, Jess Cronfeld, Emion, Ian Shrouth, Jennifer Dyer, Caroline A, H, Auntie Lou, Krista Scantlin, Lizzie's Plantacy, and Fallon Lowry. And to the rest of my financial supporters, thank you so much for being here and being you. Thank you for sitting through this long video because YouTube loves watch time. That's what helps get my videos out to other people. Thank you for dealing with me in mom life. It's a lot because Griffin's getting a little bored and fussy. So anyway, keep making waves, babes. I'll smell you all later. Mommy Tsunami out.